Hello. Good day to you. Hello, Lucas. Whoa, I'm so sad. I love that clip. Like, John is a wonderful person. I'm really happy his YouTube channel is working the way he wanted it to. Also, thank you, Jules. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, for the sub. Six months. Holy shit. Why are you doing this? Why are you running? Thank you very much. Good day to you, too. Also, happy Valentine's Day. Um... Yeah, it is Valentine's Day, because I hate ads. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> I mean, I'm not running ads, so the only ads you see on my channel is uh, the pre-roll ads. Uh, no, Lucas, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the only thing is the pre-roll ads, uh, nothing else. Also, if you want to bang for your buck, maybe Twitch Torvo is the way for you to go. Because you get ad free everywhere then. So it costs like 13 bucks, which is like the equivalent of 3 subs somewhere. But you are ad free everywhere, so might want to consider that. Anyhow, that being said, True Colors Dating Sim, we played this game, uh, this demo before. It is to be watched on our YouTubes, uh, but let's just go ahead and start the video game. This seems a bit louder. Hold on. There we go. Malek. Ash. This seems fine. Ash is super gay. <laughs> so yeah, trigger warning, mental trauma, horror of gore, violence and death. Uh, the usual stuff in a dating sim. You know? Hey there, protagonist. What's your name? My name is... Scripted. I cannot type. Why can I not type? There we go. Scripted. There we go. Well, would you look at that? Okay, I got an achievement, face-to-face, -face, collected CG1. So, is this this kind of game where you have 5 million achievements then, or...? And we will see. Well, would you look at that? Shadows under the eyes? Check. I should really stop having so many late-night gaming marathons. Kinda messy hair? Check. It never does what I want it to anyway. Indifferent expression. Double check. Yep, everything I need for the day. Ha. <laughs> I'm not depressed or apathetic. But I can't lie. My life is sort of un uneventful. I have a decent job that's reliable enough. I never exactly had ambitions to work in an office. But it pays my bills and keeps a roof over my head. So I cannot complain. Plus, my co-workers are okay. I'm not that close friends with any of them, but they're fun to shoot jokes over the water cooler with. The office is a pretty relaxed place to be. There's just a distinct lack of... What's the right word? Excitement? I just feel like I'm not really going anywhere, you know? Repeating the same routines week after week is oddly comforting in its own way. But it's not exactly stimulating. I've lived alone in this apartment for a couple of years now, doing the daily grind and not socializing outside of work. I'm single, don't have many hobbies, and I don't talk to my parents very often. We are not a close-knit family. Life is fine, you know. It is enough. It's good enough, I mean. Sometimes it just feels a bit like a treadmill. Speaking of which, I better get off this treadmill of circling thoughts and got on the train walk to work, otherwise I'm going to be late. Time to begin another predictable, unremarkable day. Oh wait, I forgot one last vital piece of my daily ensemble. 
a ketchup stain that I totally forgot to attempt to wash out of this shirt. For God's sake. Check. Ah, oh, I made it in time. Another day, another dollar. The usual office sounds fill my ears as I walk into my section. The clickety-clack of typing, the electronic whirs of printers firing out paperwork, and the clink of spoons against marks of desperately needed morning coffee. I head around the corner to the bank of desks that houses my little team. There are a few of us here, which makes it seem both isolated and weirdly cozy at the same time. Morning Cryptid, sneaking in just in time? He winks cheekily at me and I chuckle. Don't worry, I wouldn't skip out on another thrilling day of this Anderson job. Ugh, I know. Tell me about it. If this goes on for more than another week, I think my eyeball eyeballs are gonna fall out. I snort in a laugh of agreement and plonk uh, into the save file section. Oops. And plonk myself down at my desk. The co-worker to my right rolls her chair backwards, shooting us both a look of disdain. Morning. They'd better not, Sean. You're both gonna need your eyeballs so you can cry at the funeral. Funeral? Oh man. Yeah, of my patience. It is today. <laughs> Hilarious. The three of us burst into dark laughter, bonding over the organizing mundaneness of our latest project. What's office life without losing the world to live every other day, am I right? Yeah, Sean and Lydia are my immediate co-workers. They're not best buddies, but we've been on the same team for the whole time I've worked here. And they helped me learn the job and get me on my feet. I guess it feels good to be an established member of the team now even if we rarely talk about anything other than work. I shove my bag underneath my desk and boot up my computer, getting ready to begin the day. However, before I can do anything else, a new voice booms across the office that immediately causes everybody to look up. All right. Oh god, I forgot the boss. Oh no. Uh, again, we played the demo before, so yeah, I, I, I remember the boss now. Oh boy. Alright everyone, if I could have your attention for the moment. To the front, please. Ah, the boss. I don't know what you want, but we obediently abandon our desks to stand in, in a line in front of him. Now then. Good morning to you all. But I am 100% sure I already said that when we played the demo, but... Um, this guy reminds me of the Pokemon tra uh, Pokemon gym leader, dude. You know, you know the one. If you recall my memo from last week, I mentioned that we will work to secure some new members to staff to join your division. Oh, that does ring a bell. I'd forgotten about it, but we were promised some new addition to the office. Yeah, it's 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 the normal or flying gym leader dude, like the the one that's done with all that shit. You know, <laughs> we're just tired all the time. <laughs> I guess we're about to find out what the situation is. Ah. I'm glad to say that we've been successful. So without further ado, let me introduce you to your new co-workers. He steps aside, gesturing to a small group of people lingering behind him. At his encouragement, they awkwardly tiptoe forward, regarding us all with both curiosity and unfamiliarity. There they are. Three new hires, huh? That's definitely gonna make the office more lively. Casting a quick eye across them all, I notice how different they are, in both looks and demeanor. Alright. Alright. Welcome aboard, folks. This is the first, the rest of your section. We have Sean. Oh, hey. Sean gives a trademark boyish grin and a slightly over theatrical bow at the mention of his name. Ah. Scripted. I raise a hand, nodding to them all briefly. Excuse me, what? Now then. And Lydia. Hey. Lydia's shoulders bounce upwards as she smiles brightly. Understood. 
These three will be your superiors until you find your place in the team. And we will be here to train you in every aspect of the job. Okay, you can, you guys can already make up your mind which person you want to go with on this playthrough today. Last time in the demo we went with uh, her. And we went to the dog shelter, I think. So, you can uh, make up your mind, you can write it in chat. I will keep that in mind when deciding on where to go with. You'll be working together closely from now on, so be sure to get acquainted with each other. The new hires nod, their eyes flitting between us, as though trying to memorize our names and faces quickly. Now then. Why don't you introduce yourselves? He gestures to the three of them invitingly. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Lucas. Also, Jules, come on. I had a reason for that, okay? I'm pretty sure I had a reason. If you want to watch it back, the demo is up on the YouTube, so... I'm pretty sure I had a reason why I went with her. <laughs> There's a moment of hesitation as they all silently glance at each other, wondering who is going to go first. After a second, the girl in the middle takes the initiative and jumps in. Hi! Uh, I guess I'll start then. I'm Brianna. Nice to meet you all. I'm honored to be working with you, and I hope to become a genuine asset for the team. Thanks for having me. She smi smiles and wrings her hand slightly as she speaks. Her tone is pleasant, but that spiel seemed pretty stiff and predetermined. Almost as if she'd her rehearsed the script. Perhaps she's just nervous. After stepping backward a little, she looks between the two remaining new hires for the next introduction. This time... The guy on the left moves to face us with an easy smile. Yo, what's up? I'm Malik. Really nice meeting you all. This is my first time in a row like this, but I promise I'm a quick learner. Oh yeah. Oh, and I make a mean cappuccino to stave off those Monday blues. Hey. He punctuates his last statement with a pair of finger guns. Wow, both hands and everything. <laughs> Everyone giggles. And the atmosphere warms slightly. He chuckles at himself before stepping back into line. Don't do that, Malik. Yeah, don't, just, just don't. <laughs> Sorry about that, I hit the mic. My bad. All eyes now fall upon the only person who hasn't spoken yet, lingering shyly on the right. He looks as though he'd rather not have to talk at all, Oh, I remember I was so bad back... Oh, yeah. I remember I was so mad about this in the demo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember now. Introducing yourself to strangers can be awkward sometimes. Wait, he... She? Wh what gender is this person? I automatically feel rude about my confusion. I actually can't tell. They have a very androgynous look about them. After a moment of hesitation, they seem to brace themselves and pipe up at last. Hey. I'm... I'm Ash. Um... You guys seem nice. Thanks for taking me on board. They go silent, clamming up in embarrassment. Their face turns slightly red. Did they change that from the demo? We will see, yeah. maybe. Yeah. With that clumsy ending, they step back sheepishly, fixing their gaze onto the floor and waiting for someone else to say something. I guess they're not very good at socializing, or maybe it's just a new people thing. Thankfully, no one makes a fuss over it, and the boss chimes in again. All right. I think you lot can get started. Good job, Lucas. <laughs> I know it's always difficult on the first day, so for now, just take some time to go around and learn about the different tasks that'll be expected of you. Also, guys, make sure there's still the community challenge going on for funding the Pokemon randomizer. Just saying. The superiors will be on hand to brief you on everything and answer any questions you might have. He throws a hand toward me, Sean and Lydia. We all nude. Nude. Yeah, we, we all nude. <laughs> we all nod dutifully. I guess we've got a lot of explaining and demonstrating to do. Thanks, guys. I think we are halfway there, right? Yeah, we are. Let's go. 
Yeah, we all nude. <laughs> Good job. I'll leave you all to it. Any issues, you know where to find me. With a pert smile, he strides away towards his office, leaving the six of us to figure out this new situation together. Friendly as always, Lydia takes the lead straight away. Oh? I guess you guys should see the office in the different divisions, right? Shall I give you a little tour? The three new hires nod eagerly, seeming happy to be leaving the awkwardness of intro introductions behind them. Okay. No problem, come this way. She beckons the group over with an energetic way. They burst into action, following along behind her closely. While she's showing them around, I think I'll set up my database so that I can give a little demo of how it works. I tap away for a few minutes, trying to mentally prepare a sort of how to do this job 101 presentation in my head. That already comes in the final chapters. <laughs> Listen. You gotta be prepared, right? When I've got everything as organized as I can, I stand up and catch Sean's eye. Ready to give them the lowdown? All right. Let's do the thing. This thing. We stride into the adjoining office with a little more spring in our steps than usual. I guess welcoming new people makes today feel a bit re like recess rather than a regular workday. Like a pair of slightly giddy teens on a field trip, Sean and I cast around for something helpful to do. After a moment, Sean spots whatever his target is and makes a beeline toward it. Sweet. Time to mingle! He flashes me another smirk before disappearing across the maze of desks. I guess I'd better get involved too. It seems like Lydia's tour has come to an end. The new hires are now scattered around the place talking to various people and checking out the different sections of the office. I think I'll go introduce myself properly. Okay, to whom are we talking first, guys? So I know Jules wants to know more about Ash. Uh, I'm pretty sure we still have the, um, you know, this is not the decision decision. But, yeah. Oh, Lucas, we already did Brianna in, in, in the demo. Come on. <laughs> okay. So let's talk to Ash first, since uh, Jules already made up her, her mind first. And then we'll, we'll go with Brianna and then Malek. I take a stroll into the far room. After scanning the faces, I notice one that sticks out from the rest. Ash. He looks a bit frazzled. Sandwiched between Lydia and Sean as they chatter at him anim animatedly. Maybe I should join the party and try to calm things down a bit. By the way, um, there's going to, be, going to be some confusion about their pronouns during this whole dialogue thing, but I'm just reading what's there, not what I think what is, uh, is correct. Just, you know, for your interest. Uh, because I kind of feel like this is part, of, maybe, might be part of the whole shtick. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and just read what stands there instead of what I think is correct. Because assuming things sucks, you know. Anyhow, that being said. I make my way over, eyeing Ash curiously as I go. I still can't quite figure out what gender this person is. I feel guilty no matter which pronoun my mind jumps to, in case it's not right. Hopefully once we start talking properly, it'll become clear. What's up, Lucas? What's up, guys? I mean. Oh, hey. We're just giving Ash the scoop on how each division works. That's crazy. You gotta get ahead on all the office politics now before you get dragged into the vortex yourself. Lydia and Sean grin. But Ash's expression stays a bit tense as they nod. How do we access the middle chest in the background? Um. Okay, maybe we will see it later on. Another tip, if you ever forget to refill the printer paper when Jamie's in, you're gonna hear about it for weeks. Oh man. And no amount of begging will be will get Barbara to do you any favors. Induce her wrath at your own peril. 
Ash continues to nod along, but they still look quite bewildered, like a deer in the headlights. I think there's many people talking all at once is too much for their shy personality to take. Especially on the first day. Well, it's a good job as Ash's mainly working with us three, right? You hit the jackpot there. No drama with us. I direct the last part of my sentence at Ash, with what I hope is an encouraging smile. You know it. We are the coolest gang in the building, no doubt. Really? Yeah, it'll be easy once you get started. Anyway, first days are for taking things slow, right? You can't learn everything at once, so don't worry about it. This is how you know this is fiction. I never had a job having people like this. Anyhow, I kind of look at all three of them and I say this. Hoping that Sean and Lydia will get the hint that they should probably lay off a bit. Thankfully, it seems to work. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Go write yourself a list with all the little knickknacks you're gonna decorate your desk with. Work can start tomorrow. He catches Lydia's eye, and they start to stride away. See you around. Okay, which middle chest do you... I mean, it still works. You still have... You know, it's... You have to scoop for the second chair a little bit, but, you know... It's not like it's terrible. Also, it doesn't see. It seems like it's more a break area than anything else. Okay, thank you for country for your contribution, Jules. <laughs> also, maybe it's just a perspective thing, Jules, uh, Lucas. Maybe it's just you know the perspective we're looking at. Maybe there's way more space than it looks like. That's quite possible. Ooh, that's better. The pair of them aren't exactly boisterous, but Ash seems to be a little on a timid side. I don't want them getting overwhelmed the second they arrive here. I glance at them as they, well, as they hover awkwardly. The deer in the head likes look has dimmed slightly, but there's still a sense of caution there. <laughs> Scam. <laughs> Sorry if they were a bit loud. You'll get used to them. Oh. Yeah. I carry on, trying to make my voice a little softer. So, there are quite a few tasks you'll need to do here on a regular basis. But I can show you all you need to know. We have a great online system that organizes the team. So knowing what to do next is pretty simple. Ash nods again, more slowly this time. Oh, okay. That sounds good. They fitted bells bashfully for a second. When they speak again though, their tone is lighter. Thanks. For taking the edge off things just then. With Sean and Lydia, I mean... No, no problem. You kinda looked like you were beating, being eaten alive when I walked into the room. So I thought I'd better nudge them away to find another victim. <laughs> they actually laugh at, at this to my surprise. It's a soft quick giggle, but it's sorta cute. Right. Yeah, it was a bit intense. I... Uh... It's not that I'm nervous exactly. I'm just not great at getting used to new situations. Well, that's pretty common, I think. Plus, first days in new places are always weird. They nod more vi vigorously, seeming slightly more relaxed now. Yeah, you're right. Anytime. They sent another tiny smile my way. I should want back enjoying the warmth of it. I bet they are a really nice person underneath all the shyness. I also find their quieter energy a pleasant contrast to the rest of the office. Not everyone has to be loud and chatty all the time. Um... I think I'll go and check out my desk. Sure, see you around. Ash nods once more and then heads out of the room. Well, that was... Wait. Oh, balls. I still haven't figured out this gender thing, have I? Nothing Ash said in the conversation made it any more obvious. And it's not like I can even judge based on a name. Ash is unisex, right? Well, call me Charlotte because I've got a mystery to solve. It's not a mystery, it's just fucking ass, dude. Ugh, I don't know. Anyhow, let's talk to Brianna next. For Lucas, because he's... I guess he's into Brianna. Whatever. <laughs> Looking around, I spy Brianna in the middle of the office, talking to Sean. Uh, of course, a pretty girl and Sean's there. Preparing to third wheel him out of this flirting game, I stroll over. Hey, how's it going? 
Vienna turns to me as I speak, seeming open to having a third person to join the conversation. Yeah, and alright. Exactly, Jules. Exactly. It's not it's not that hard. It is not that hard. Ah, take that, Sean. Uh, hi, Cryptid, was it? Yep, well remembered. She smiles briefly. <laughs> Thanks, I'm Brianna. Although I guess I already told you that. She shuffles awkwardly for a second with an airy giggle. Definitely nervous. Oh, hey. I was just saying how nice it is to have someone so eager to impress on the team. I bet you were. You're not so smooth operator. I can't wait to get started. I'll do my best to contribute to your already stellar workforce and produce the best results possible. Not gonna lie, her enthusiasm is a bit intense. It's probably just first day jitter still. I doubt she's actually this stiff and formal all the time. All right. Well, looking forward to it. So Ash is an introvert, Bianca is an nervous wreck. Eh. I mean, from what we saw in the demo, it's not that being that she's being nervous or something. She's, it's just the first day thing, you know. You're trying to impress people, and she's like over the top with it. He shoots Brianna a grin before shuffling away to talk to someone else. I guess all this boring work talk has squashed all the chatter lines of out of him. Once he disappears, Brianna turns face to, turns to face me more directly. Her expression snaps back to intention again, as though waiting for ins instructions. There's no need for her to stand on a ceremony like this. You know, this place is pretty relaxed. You don't need to worry about being super professional and serious all the time. She regards me for a moment, frozen in thought. Then she seems to loosen up at least a little, exhaling a laugh. You're right. I'm being way too corporate, aren't I? She grins in disdain at herself and I smile back. I just really... Was worried about making a good impression today. I really want the boss to feel like he made the right decision hiring me. I want to learn as much as I can, so I can become a decent member of the team quickly. And not slow you guys, and not slow you guys down. Well, that's really thoughtful and all, but... You know, the first day on the job is never that productive, right? Yeah, a people pleaser. That That's what I... I mean, I used to be like that. Way, way back when. Can you can you imagine me being a people pleaser? <laughs> oh, good. good old times. You have so many new names to learn. Desktop backgrounds to pick out and bathrooms to memorize the locations of. The actual work doesn't tend to start until the day after. She laughs, and this time it's not an anxious giggle, but a genuine chuckle. Nice. Of course, I should have seen that coming. I'd better spend the afternoon learning everyone's favorite candy, and who's secretly dating who, right? Exactly. As we banter idly, I find myself admiring how much more warm and open she seems now that she's not stuck in work mode. It'll be much easier to get to know her this way. By the way... So, I was wondering... She straightens up and reins her smile back in, as though someone pressed the stop slacking button. Can I ask you something? Is there a specific met method or schedule that you guys stick to when collating your data? Do you just discuss it as a group, or is it more like individually based? Damn. Guess I spoke too soon. Miss Professional is back. I mean, you still worry a lot about opinions and moments where there's no need to. Listen, some habits are hard to get rid of, you know. <laughs> but I was way worse back when. I was way worse a few years back. Accepting that she's clearly too focused on learning the job to chat casually right now, I start explaining things. I go. I don't go into huge detail yet, since it's only day one, but I give her a general overview on how the team works. So, okay, hold on. That's fine. Okay, never mind. She watches me intently as I speak, as though soaking up all the information like a sponge. 
Oh yeah, I, I know you weren't judging. I know that. I was just explaining how how it was way worse way, you know. God, I, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I have to hand it to her. She's laser focused. She's probably gonna outperform myself, Lydia and Sean once she's once she gets going. When I run out of things to say for now, she claps her hands together with an energetic smile. Thanks. That's all really helpful, Cryptid. Thanks a lot. What do you think I'm doing, Lucas? Come on. <laughs> no worries. I'll leave you to chat with the others. I probably shouldn't hawk her time. Okay, sure. It was great talking to you. Thanks again. She beams momentarily before striding away to join a nearby group of workers. When you ignore the fact that 90% of her conversations revolve around quizzing you about work, she is actually quite lively and bubbly. It's already helpful, Cryptid. No one ever. Yep. <laughs> Accurate. I bet she's fun to talk to when she's more chilled out. Okay, let's talk to Malak. I wander back toward my section, spotting Malak and Lydia having a chat between the desks. They look like they're enjoying themselves. Wanting to get in on the fun, I join them. Nice to see you again. You're cryptid, right? Nice to meet you properly. He extends a hand and I shake it. It's not a typical business-like handshake, though. It's more like a bro shake. D don't call anything a bro shake, please. Ever. He's one of the cool types. Hey. I think we lucked out with this one. She jerks her head toward Malik as she says this. Awesome. He wasn't lying about those coffee skills. I feel like I should have paid about 12 bucks for this for this in some hipster brewery. Starbucks. <coughs> Starbucks. <coughs> she jiggles her mark under my nose, and I get a tantalizing whiff of coffee and hot foamy milk. Oh yeah. You'll have to get your order in. Gonna butter you up for all the work-related favors I'm inevitably gonna need to ask for in the future. He cracks a grin and I feel my own smile winding to match. Alrighty, I'll try to come up with the most complicated drink I can imagine. <laughs> he chuckles warmly. What's the deal? So Malik, what made you apply to work here? There are plenty of jobs in a city like this, right? Why pick us? He replies almost immediately. Um... Money? <laughs> he barks a laugh to show that he's only messing around, and both Lydia and I giggle at his wise cracking. In fact. No, 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 but seriously. He drops the jokes and starts to talk about how he found the joke. It's not a thrilling conversation, but I find myself getting drawn in nonetheless. I think it's how friendly and chilled out this guy seems. He's not super formal like Brianna, or awkward and shy like Ash. He has a real calm, carefree vibe about him. As I resurface from my thoughts, I realize that the talk had shifted towards work. Oh? It just reminded me, actually. Do you know how to program formulas on the spreadsheet? It didn't make some things so much quicker. Hmm. Basically, yeah. I'm sure you guys know some secret tips, tricks and tips. How do you tend to do it? He and Lydia start comparing formulas and I notice how he tightens up his act. Just enough to be considered a professional. So he's got both sides going for him. Nice. When they're done discussing the joys of spreadsheets, I jump back in. So, how are you feeling about the job, Malik? Think you'll enjoy working here? Sure thing. Oh, I reckon so. I have to admit, this is something of a big change for me. I haven't worked in this kind of environment before. I'm too worried, though. I feel like I should be able to get up to speed in decent time. I like learning new things. Besides, you all seem really nice. I'm looking forward to hanging out and getting to know you all a little better. He smiles as he say th says this, and his warm energy seems to permeate the room. Did this guy just fart? Okay, never mind, I'm not... <sighs> Why am I like this? Come on. Right back at you, dude. No. Okay. He nods at me with quite appreciation, and I return it. I think it's gonna be nice to have around. Okay, we've had enough chatting for now. The rest of the day had actually flown by. What with all the socializing, demonstrating and showing around. 
By the time we all exit out the late afternoon light, I feel both tired and strangely energized at the same time. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed your first day, guys. Tomorrow is when the real fun begins. Aww. We'll have to do actual. <laughs> We'll have to actually do some work, damn it. <laughs> Everyone giggles and I loiter beside Sean and Lydia as we gaze as at the new hires. I hope that their new experience of the office has been a good one so far. Exactly. Yeah, thanks man, it's been real. Looking forward to tomorrow. He regards us all with ease, as though he already known us for months. I appreciate that. I've got some errands to run, so I'm gonna bounce. But thanks again for everything. Good luck to you both, too. He turns to Ash and Brianna as he says that last part, beaming warmly at them. Thanks. Thanks to you, too. Yeah. Y yeah. Catch you on the flip side. All right, catch you on the flip side. Uh. Why? He sits up over Rick's place, disappearing into the crowd of commenters around us. Um. I think I'm gonna head off too. They seem kinda anxious to follow Malik's lead and go home for the day. That guy's far too social. Yeah, he, uh, he probably has the most sad and disturbing background <laughs> in this video game. It's probably only out of social exhaustion though, so I don't mind the quick escape. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah, th thanks for the help. See y'all. They scuttle away as at a fast pace, probably relieved to be able to go home and recharge. Brianna then turns to us all, a business-like smile plastered onto her face. That's great. I'm really grateful to you all for such a warm welcome. I'll definitely be pulling my way tomorrow and learning everything I can. The professional air never quite leaves her, does it? She almost looks as uh, looks as she she'd like to stand here talking about email templates for another hour. Oh yeah. I'm sure you will, Blondie. See you tomorrow. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Sean. <laughs> he winks at her and she exhales a high laugh before waving and leaving at last. Huh? What do you think? The boss made some de decent choices, right? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully, once they all settled in, our workload won't be as big, and we can chill out a bit. Hey! And don't go getting ahead of yourself. We'll still have to finish that Anderson project. <laughs> we all groan in unison before bursting into laughter. Laters! He's a perv. What an absolute creep. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Catch you two in the morning. And both of them throw their hands up in a casual wave, leaving me to head to the train station. Ah, home sweet home. I throw my keys and bag onto the table, drop myself onto the couch. I think about what I have to do what I have for dinner in a minute. Yeah, it, it, it looks really roomy. <laughs> well, today was certainly more interesting than usual. I guess I got my wish, after all that grumbling I did this morning about having a boring routine. My mind actually act automatically flits between the three new hires I met. Vienna is definitely the most forward of the bunch. Eh? Always talking and looking for something new to learn or do. I admire her focus, but I also hope to see a bit more of a real Brianna once she's settling into a routine. I reckon there's actually a carefree and fun streak beyond the new workplace mask she wears. Malik is a total anchor. He seems really chilled, comfortable in his own skin and confident without being cocky. He's also super friendly and equally nice to everyone. He'll be a positive influence in the office, no doubt. Ash is an enigma. They could come across as detached, and maybe even rude, but that's definitely not it. I can tell there's a much more open person under there somewhere, 
and I really hope they can relax enough to let it show as time goes on. I'm kinda curious about them. Him, her, or whatever. Doesn't matter. All things considered, work life is going to be a bit different for a while, and I'm happy for the change. Tomorrow has arrived, and Lydia, Sean, and I have been summoned to see the boss. Not the loveliest place to start your Friday, but I doubt you we are in trouble. He probably just wants to ask us to do something. Oh, here he is. Ah. Ah, you three. Very good. How did we find yesterday? Do you think the new blood will fit in well with the team? Definitely. They're great. Lydia and Sean offer similar compliments and he nods in satisfaction. Now then. Glad to hear it. No wonder why I asked you here. I'm sure these new hires will be able to learn their roles just fine. However, it would speed up uh, things a bit if they had a designated person to help them through and really show them the ropes on a one-to-one -one basis. There's three of them and three of you, so it makes sense, don't you think? How about you all decide which one you'd like to mentor and let them sort of shadow you for the time being until they find their feet. We exchange surprised but approving glances. Seems like a good plan. As we nod and emit mumbles of agreement, he folds his arms, looking pleased. All right. That's that, then. Figure it out between you and get to work. I'm sure the new folk will appreciate it. Off you go now. I pick Lydia's boobs. Yep, that's not an option. <laughs> he shoots out of his office half-jokingly, and we head back toward our section. So what do you think? Got your eye on anyone? Oh? I'm not sure. I could probably work with any of them. What about you, Cryptid? Do we have someone in mind? Her question causes my gaze to wander across the room, landing on each new person in turn and mulling it over. I'm sure I'd get along decently with all three, but I have to spend more time with just one of them than... Who are we gonna pick, guys? So, Lucas has Brianna, Jules has Ash, you guys are not helpful. <laughs> uh, so if it was for me, since we already went with Brianna last time in the demo, I kinda would... I'm not here to be helpful. <laughs> you know, since we already had Brianna on the demo when we played it, I'm gonna... Mm. Okay, okay RTD, R2D2. Sure thing. So I think we're gonna go with Ash unless someone in chat has a veto against that. I mean, I doubt y'all have a veto about that, but you know. Let's go with Ash for now. I'm kind of tempted to choose Ash. I've been hoping to get to know them a bit better and find out what kind of person they really are. This is a good opportunity, right? Shall I go with Ash? Is that cool with you guys? Okay. Sure thing. Oh. I'll pick Brianna then. Gonna get real close with her. It's Max su suggestively, and Lydia and I both roll our eyes. Shut up, loser. Don't be such a creep. Ow. Damn. <laughs> she kicks him swiftly in the shin, and he yelps. I'm just kidding. There's still a slight glint in his eye that just suggests otherwise, and we all giggle. I'll leave you to sort this guy's out this guy out, Lydia. Don't let him perf on her a sec the second they start talking. Oh man. I'll do my best. If you hear the office gossip start mentioning a harassment lawsuit, I failed. Yeah, vomit is no emote. That's not a thing. That's not working, yeah. What do you mean you didn't? Oh no, not again. That's not good. How about this one? If it doesn't work, we will figure it out. Okay, uh, we're gonna figure it out later when we have our Venom, Venom Times Day. It's, it's gonna be fine. Okay, back to it. I laugh, shuffle away as they start bickering playfully again. Okay, where's Edge? After a moment, I spot them hovering by the activity board at the back of the room. Their head tilted in curiosity. 
Ash, yeah, checking out the to-do list? They turned to me with a little surprise. Yeah. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do first. Which task should I start learning? Well, I can make it a bit li uh, little bit easier for you, actually. The boss just asked me, Sean, and Lydia to act as mentors to you three new hires and show you the ropes in more detail. I can go through everything with you on a one-to-one -one basis until you feel more confident, if you're happy to do that. Ash's eyebrows raise slightly, then they nod, seeming a little more relaxed. Sure. That would be good, thanks. Great. Where do you want to start? I can show you how to use the d database if you like. Um... He paused hesitantly, looking worried. Can you just... Is it okay if we start with something more simple? Just to begin with. I just feel a bit, uh, yeah. I guess they're still finding the new environment a bit daunting. I can roll with that. No problem, I've got an idea. I flash them what I hope is a comfort comforting smile. I'd better tread carefully for now and keep things slow paced. I brought Ash to the middle office. I'd given them a pretty easy job. Filing paperwork. Oh my god, they're gonna hate us. <laughs> It doesn't involve much more than putting sheets and envelopes in various boxes and folders, so that they go through the right departments. Thankfully, Ash had taken, it to, taken to it quickly. It's not exactly fun, but I guess it's a level, that level of simple that they were hoping for. I haven't managed to get much conversation out of Ash yet, but I should have seen that coming, really. They are not that outspoken. Learning more about them might have to wait for another time. Putting my brain back on the task at hand, I check over the folder they just added to. You're getting good at this. Everything's in the right place. Cool. But I don't mind doing this stuff. It's kind of relaxing. I think they're the only person in the office who'd see it that way. But hey, at least someone enjoys it. I'm glad we could find a less confusing starting point. For you. It should be a brief smile, nod nodding in gratitude. Do you feel a bit better about the job now? I know new things can feel strange. Yesterday was probably a lot, right? They glance up at me more directly when I ask this. <sighs> a bit, yeah. Everyone seems nice, which helps. I'll try to get to know them properly once I feel more settled. I nod with a smile. Can I ask... Can I ask you something about the boss? Sure, what is it? Um... Is he strict about anything? Like, does he dislike certain things in the workplace? Not really. He's pretty businesslike, but I wouldn't call him strict. Why do you ask? Well... Ash fidgets awkwardly for a second. Oh. He just made some comments yesterday that made me worry that I'd have to change the way I look. Oh, how so? Um... He said my clothes were a little baggy. They shrink in embarrassment. That happened. And my hair was interesting. Oh my god. Okay. A classic cover-up word for disapproval. Damn, I'm sorry he made you feel bad about it. That's not... No, it's... They pause for a second, then unex an unexpected grin spreads across their face. <laughs> a shy, shy, shy. A shy but genuine giggle bursts into the air. It catches me off guard, but in a nice way. No stress. It wasn't great, but it was kind of funny too. It's not the first time I've had people comment on how I look. It's a shame that they have people judging them on it, but it seems like they're somewhat used to it. If they can laugh about it. Besides, I think their appearance suits them. It's cool with me. I mean, I think most of us has be have been there. From what I think, like... People judging how the way one looks, I guess, so... Whatever. It doesn't help the gender confusion, but that's another story. I don't think you have any trouble with it here. The boss is a professional guy. But he's pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable too. He probably said that just to hint at the idea that he might not love it, but I'm sure he won't make a fuss. As long as they show up on time and do a good job, I don't think he really minds that much about anything else. Ash's shoulder relaxed, slightly in relief. Cool. That's good to hear. I'm kinda used to people being weird about my looks, but it's my decision at the end of the day, as long as it won't be a problem here. 
not in agreement and they sudden, their sudden confidence surprises me. They seem pretty certain about themselves when it comes to this. Not something I imagined from such a shy person. I'm glad it doesn't bother you if people say anything. It's fine. I'm happy with, with the way I am. And I guess that's all that matters, right? Absolutely. I love that you don't feel any pressure to conform to anyone's expectation when it comes to that. You're right not to. Your style is your business. You should totally own it. Ash seems to really appreciate the compliment. Thanks a lot. I think I've become more firm about it because of how re it relates to some personal stuff. Their expression grows serious again. And they abandon their paperwork to gaze at me more directly. You know... I hope this isn't TMI, but... I actually identify as non-binary. That suddenly makes a lot of sense. I guess the gender confusion is kinda understandable now. It's not too much at all. Thanks for telling me that. I totally get it. Thanks. I've had to embrace a few new things while discovering myself on that journey, and being confident about how I present myself is one of them. It was hard at first, but I'm much better at it now. I get that some workplaces might not think it's right for their employees to look so androgynous, but whatever word people want to use to describe me, but I'll still do what I can to keep my identity. That's actually really powerful. Who knew there was such a determination behind that unsure expression they usually wear? I might know, not know what sex Ash was born as, but honestly, I don't think it really matters. Ash is Ash, and I'm happy to accept that without knowing any details about the past. I think I stay an hour for a second too long. Ash seems to grow worried as they look back at me. Hold on. It doesn't weird you out, does it? That I'm non-binary? Of course not. Okay. Some people just, I don't know, have a problem with that. No, seriously, you are you and I like that. The appearance thing also makes total sense. It is important that you feel good about how you look and that it represents you who you really are. That's not something you should ever compromise, right? Definitely. That's exactly it. That's how I try to live nowadays. I'm feeling that so much, yeah. Well, I think you're nailing it. Don't worry about the boss. If he says anything else, I'll back you up. We got this. <laughs> Ash chuckles, their whole face brightening. Thanks. I might need the support. We grin at each other and the day suddenly feels a lot more vibrant. By the way, I just want to be sure I get this right. What pronouns do you prefer? Finally, wow. he asks so. Okay. I'm not actually used to people asking me that. Thanks for caring. It only took him uh, almost two days to finally fucking ask, you know. Of course. I never want to offend them, even though if it was by accident. People should be more aware of these things in this day and age. Um. I usually go by they them. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Sure. No problem. Mystery solved. It wasn't that hard to just fucking ask, was it now? Well... They glanced down at the discarded part of paper in front of them. Right. We should probably get back to work, right? Yeah, I guess so. They settled back down, sorting through the pages again. I do the same, but there's a pleasant warm feeling in my chest that's hard to ignore. Okay, Lucas. I don't know what I said, but apparently I said it wrong. Cool. I got my wish to get to know Ash a bit better just now, and I really enjoyed it. The more I find out about them, the more I want to learn. Oh. Also, yeah. Um, thanks. For the nice talk and understanding. Another sweet smile comes my way, and I can't help but reflect it. Anytime. The afternoon had passed decently. I'd introduced Ash to some more easy tasks, and our conversation flowed more smoothly as time went on. I'm really glad that we've broken the ice properly now. When the clock finally hits 5pm, the whole room rejoices. Home time. Oh, especially in a work environment. Oh, that, that's what you mean, yeah. I mean, it really isn't. Like, ugh. This is, this is a typical thing, like, 
people like us cannot get the head around people that have issues with that. You know, we, we just can't get the head around why it is so hard for them to just, you know, ask and just, you know, respect whatever uh, the other person, you know, wishes for them. It's so weird. <laughs> Anyhow. It's, it's so weird to me. Awesome! Just wanted to say, good work, everyone. That was a great first proper day on the job. Sweet! Second that, gold stars all around. I hum in agreement, giving the thumbs up. Everyone smiles and the new hires nod in thanks. Once we get our things together, all six of us seem to hover expectingly, glancing around and wondering who's going to walk with us with who as we leave. Malik, Brianna and Ash are probably feeling a bit awkward, having still not been here long enough to make proper friends with anyone. After a few seconds, Malik turns to Brianna, who smiles woodenly. She then catches Lydia's eye, and Lydia motions to Sean. I guess they are all wanting to talk as a group, to walk as a group. I go to join them, but then out of the corner of my eye I spy Ash. They haven't moved yet, still layering bashfully by their desk. Maybe the group scenario is a little too much for them. When I head down together, they glance between me and the others, seeming a little relieved about my offer. The idea of it being just two must be more appealing. Oh, okay. Sure thing. After sharing a brief smile, we make for the stairs. People are smiling a lot in this video game. J just saying. As we come to a halt on the sidewalk, I turn back and spot the rest of our section saying their goodbyes in a huddle. I guess we were the only ones that splintered off. Ready to head home? They do look a little tired. Yeah. We're gonna chill out tonight. Thanks for all the help today and everything else. Don't mention it. I hope I could make your first proper day on the job a bit easier. Definitely. Oh, you did. I know a lot more about what I'm doing now. I think I'll be able to get used to everything soon. Things still feel a bit weird, but I'll probably help if I can start... It will probably help if I can start making friends. They smile, but their eyes start around everybody with a little anxiety. Malik is cracking jokes with the others, and they are all laughing and chipping in with silly comments on their own. Since Ash isn't as, outgo it isn't as outgoing as that, it must seem kind of intimidating for them to try to get involved. If they prefer a quieter atmosphere and having more individual conversations, then I'm happy to try to provide that. Well, you know I'm always around if you want to chat. It would be nice for us to get to know each other better. Ash's wandering eyes land on me again, and they relax. Okay. I'd like that. Today was fun. I smile, and then the, an idea strikes me. This might be too bold, but... Sorry, I had to sneeze. You know, we could always hang out sometime at the weekend, if you wanted. It'd be much easier to talk when we're not working. Surprise floods their expression, and I instantly worry that I overstepped the mark. It's not like me to invite people out, but I guess this whole new highest thing has disrupted my usual thought process. Besides, I do genuinely like Ash. I love a chance to work my way toward being actual friends with them, like they said. Is it too soon to ask, though? Ash cocks their head to one side as they contemplate me. To my relief, their slightly alarmed look gives away to, gives away to a smile. Sure. I mean, thanks for inviting me. I didn't expect that. Neither did I. I kind of just blurted it out. Hey, anytime. I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but... If you were down to meet up... Wait, it might be too short notice. My own social life is completely dead, so I didn't even think twice about making impromptu plans. Ash might already be busy though. Yeah. I'm not really doing anything tomorrow. Is that okay? Oh, alright, we're on. That's fine with me. The pair of us grin with awkward enthusiasm, and then we swap numbers so we, that we can arrange a time and place. As I save the new contact in my phone, my chest flutters with excitement. This is definitely not part of my normal weekend activities, and it's a nice contrast. So what do you want to do? Anything you usually get up at the weekend? Um... A blush starts to creep into their cheeks. This is... 
you'll probably think I'm boring, but I'm kind of introverted, so I tend to just do quiet things like going to the cinema. They seem a little ashamed, but I certainly don't think it's lame. That's cool with me. I haven't been to a cinema for a while. When I watch a movie, when when was the last time you all went to a th cinema? Like to an actual movie thing. Because I cannot even remember the last time I was there. I think the last time I went to a cinema was for... What movie was it? Holy shit. Mm. What did I last see in the cinema? I cannot recall anything. Into the Spider-Verse? Okay. I mean, that's rather recent. I mean, my, mine has to be at least 20 years back. I know. Maybe 15. But I cannot recall the movie or whatever. Damn. Oh. Okay. Alright then. Shall we just see what's on when we get there? Sure, I'm easy. I watch almost anything. Cool. I used to go to the cinemas often. I... I really dislike cinema. I don't know why it is. I don't know why, but I just dislike it. So it's so loud. It's so. Uh, I don't know. It's all over the place, and I don't like it. <laughs> so we meet outside the cinema. We can figure out a time later if you want. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Nice. This is really happening. I'm so glad I didn't scare them off by being so forward. See ya. See you tomorrow then. Yep, see ya. They patter away down the street, and I'm filled with an unfamiliar buzzing feeling as I watch them go. Ash is definitely one of the most introverted people I've met, but there's something about them that I'm drawn to, even when they're too shy to express themselves properly. I really hope I can help them feel relaxed around me tomorrow. Never mind all that, just the thought of going anywhere with anyone at the weekend is pretty sweet to me. I wanted to see the Venom movies in the cinema, but I couldn't because kids, yeah, yeah. When was the last time I got invited anywhere that wasn't just Sean and Lydia dragging me into a cafe for an extra caffeine boost after a hard day? I genuinely can't remember. My chest hums slightly with a warm feeling, and I find myself looking forward to tomorrow. Snapping out of my reverie. Snapping out of my reverie. Thank you. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, German dubs are no. That's that that's that's a no no for people like us. <laughs> that's true. I realize that everyone else has left already. They must have all said goodbye and gone while Ash and I were making plans. Plants, not plants. Leave me alone. I didn't say plants. Shush. Turning on my heel, I head off towards our home feeling a little tingle of optimism. Finally, something fun is happening in this dull, dull life of mine. Okay. And I think this is the perfect place for us to take our first break for the day. Oh, cool. oh look at that. We actually have our old save file here. That's actually not terrible. We can look at that somewhat later-ish or something. September 30th, last year. Holy shit. Anyhow, we're gonna take our break now, which means um, I'm gonna, you know, stretch out a bit. I'm gonna get some water because having all this talking is really, really hard on me. So yeah, take the break with me. If not, that's fine too. I'll see you all at three to five. Alright, we are back. Back in action. The cheerful sunlight bath bathes in the city in a happy glow as I walk, magnifying my already good mood. I'm still psyched that I get to spend today with a potential new friend. I hardly stop thinking about it all evening. Is that bad? Is my routine really that boring that a single casual hangout seems this monumental? Get a life. Chucking at myself, I come to a halt by the square outside the big entertain entertainment complex. 
I don't think Ash has arrived yet. Oh wait, I see them. I wave with a smile to catch their attention. They notice me, waving back with a sheepish grin. Hey. Hey Ash, how are you doing? Yeah. But thanks, I'm not late, late, am I? Nope, I literally just got here myself. Cool. For a second I can't help but gaze with interest at their outfit. The whole thing increases the non-binary vibes tenfold. It really suits them, actually, and it's definitely a look I'd only associate with Ash. Also, I'm as I'm admiring it, Ash shows me a confused look. Um... You okay? Yeah, sorry, I was just thinking your clothes really add to the non-binary part of your identity. Everything you said yesterday makes a lot of more sense now I see you like this. They do look cute, yeah. Is that a good thing? Of course. You look more you than you do at work. It's cool. Ash nods slowly, turning my words over in their mind. <sighs> well, thanks. I can't quite tell what they're thinking. Maybe they're just not used to people being nice about their fashion sense. After a moment, they shrug off their spaced out expression. Well... Ready to catch a movie? Yeah, let's head inside. Give me one second, please. Hey, Cryptid, we just had a break. Don't give me a second. Play the fucking game. Okay. <laughs> we instant, instantly gravitate toward the board that's displaying all the movie times. Hey, um... Is there anything specific you want to see? Not really. I don't mind what we watch. What about you? Anything you've had your eye on? Yeah. God, this is so loud. I already made it way, you know, quieter for you guys, but man, my eardrums are exploding. There's one... You might think it's stupid, though. I'm sure I won't. What is it? They shift a little in embarrassment. You know... I tend to go for things with aromas in them. I was thinking of checking out this one. They point to the little... Uh, to the title of a rom-com movie. But I... We really don't have to, though. I won't drag you to see if it's not your thing. Their posture wills, as though they are already expecting me to say, Hell no! I'm not watching that crap! Luckily, I'm not that judgmental. Hey, it's fine with me. I just like movies in general. I'm totally down for a rom-com if that's what you want to see. Their eyebrows shoot up in surprise. Oh. Oh. Okay. Alright then, as long as you're sure. Absolutely. The next showing is in 20 minutes. Shall we get tickets? Nice. Okay, great. We buy our tickets and a couple of snacks too. They're kinda overpriced, but you gotta have the full cinema experience, right? Sharing awkward grins, we head to our screen. Movie theaters always feel weird when they're fully lit. We find our seats and get comfortable. For a couple of minutes, we do nothing but stare up at the blank screen, grabbing occasional mouthfuls of our snacks. I guess conversation still isn't always come naturally to us yet, and as shyness definitely adds to it. I rack my brains for something to say. To my surprise, Ash actually gets the first for once. You know... By the way, thanks for inviting me out today. It was really nice of you. Not at all. It's nice to spend some time with you outside of work. They nod, taking a breath to steady themselves before continuing. I, uh... I also wanted to say... I know I've been super quiet in the office so far, but I'm gonna try harder to change that. I realize that I probably seem kinda closed off, but I'm definitely not. It just takes me a little while to get used to new situations and people. I want you and the others to feel like you can talk to me easily, and not tread on eggshells around me or anything. It's alright. I'm not that fragile, I promise. They exhale a tiny laugh, and I find myself doing the same. You don't have to apologize for anything. It's fine to be quieter than everyone else. 
I definitely don't think your route are shut off either, so don't worry about that. Cool. That's a relief. Is this your first office job, then? That won't make their anxiety especially understandable. Well... It's not, actually. I've worked in a couple of offices part-time since I graduated university. I think that's why the boss picked me. That's surprising. I just feel like... I feel like they didn't prepare me very well, though. You know, when some jobs don't let the newbies do much, because they don't know the ropes and might mess things up. Oh yeah, some bosses are dumb like that. Right? I know, right? It's like, how am I supposed to learn if you don't let me do stuff? My previous jobs were like that. They never let me have many responsibilities. So I got an idea of how the office worked, but no proper knowledge of it. And that's why you feel you're a bit overwhelmed, starting with us, right? Ash points at me with an expression that says, Bingo. Yeah. I haven't felt confident in what I'm doing yet. But once I get to that point, I'll be more friendly towards everyone. I'm just, yeah, still figuring it out. That makes total sense, honestly. Don't worry about it. You'll be a solid part of the team in no time. If you ever need anything, you can always ask me. I'm only a couple of desks away. They break into a grateful smile. Thanks. It's uh, nice to chat to you like this, you know, when we're not trying to work at the same time. Yeah, definitely. We enjoy a moment of quiet contentment, and then Ash checks the time. <sighs> the movie should be starting soon. I notice their legs jiggling just a little bit. I guess they're excited. Are you really into movies then? Yeah. I do quite like them. Like I said before, I'm kind of an introvert, so... My hope is only really involve chill out things like seeing movies and playing games. I hear a little flack of shame in her voice in the in their voice again. But there's no need for it at all. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm the same really. I gained quite a lot, and my movie collection is getting quite a big now. Ash's eyes seem to light up when I say this. Nice. I do love mo movies, honestly. Oh, that's a cute picture. Chief not a spark of passion. They swivel in their seat to look at me more directly, and I swear their whole energy changes somehow. That's a really neat picture. I like that. I think so. They like a super easy way to get lost into something, aren't they? Like you can forget about your real life for a while and just immerse yourself in another world. I think getting caught up in an amazing story is probably my favorite thing in life, actually. Ash really starts to shine when they talk about their passions. It's so lovely to see after how timid they've been at work. Hey, um... What kind of movies do you like best? I know you said you're pretty open to anything, but do you have a favorite genre? Maybe thrillers or anything fantasy-based. The good old versus... Uh, the, good, the old good versus evil thing, you know? Ash grins with a nod. Cool. Classic. Can't go wrong with that. It's definitely romance for me, though. I'm not sure why. Maybe you're just a sucker for a big, cheesy, happy ending. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's just... A sort of faraway look twinkles in their eye, and they seem almost dreamy as they speak. I just feel like... I love the concept of relationships in general. Being loyal to one person and giving them the all. I like seeing relationships work out on screen, especially if they've been through struggles to get there. And I guess I... They blush a little. You know... I like romantic gestures. Not necessarily the grand, over-the-top ones, but just nice, heartfelt things that make sure that someone's feelings are real. They smile absent-mindedly, looking more relaxed than I've ever seen them. Yeah. That's why I like them, I guess. It probably sounds way too corny, right? I like that you're so into them. It's cute. Our eyes meet and the smile we share has a real warmth to it. I'm about to ask them if they have a favorite rom-com of all time when... The lights go down, the movie's starting at last. Grinning, we accept the interruption and sit back to enjoy the show. However, the conversation lingers pleasantly in my mind for a while. 
I really appreciated seeing more of the real Ash just now. I knew there was a vibrant person hiding in there. It just needed the right environment to cox it all out. They seem very sweet, and the way they view a relationship with uh, such reverence is pretty awesome to me. I've always been the kind of person to take relationships seriously, and not just fool around. I'm very till death do us part, and have often daydreamed about finding that one person who treats you right, and spending the rest of my life with them. I might not watch a whole ton of romance movies, but I'm definitely a romantic at heart. It seems like Ash is too, and honestly, it's kind of attractive. I liked Ash anyway, but knowing this side of them only makes them even nicer in my eyes. I won't lie, the thought that they treasure relationships the way I do makes my chest tingle a little. The movie was pretty good. Once it's over, we head back into the lobby. The pair of us laugh as our eyes struggle to get used to the piercing light again. So, what did you think? Did it live up to your romantic expectations? Definitely. It was nice, yeah. I liked how the guy actually gave up his job to move back across the country to be with her. Can you imagine if everyone was that selfless in the name of love? Their face brightens again. The bar has been set, people. Not gonna go. Not gonna throw your life away from me. Not interested. <laughs> we laugh more loudly. The two of us seem way more at ease with each other now. I'm guessing you'd like to be in a relationship like that, like in that movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A sense of loyalty was the best thing to me. If I had a partner, I feel like my whole world would revolve around them. I love knowing that people are happy with me. That's. That's exactly the thing and kind of thing I crave. God, I'd love to be with someone like that. Mm. Yeah. We both breathe for a second, realizing the accidental suggestion we've made. I hadn't meant to sound like I'd love to be with Ash specifically, but the way I had said it. Oops. The two of us chuckle awkwardly, our cheeks burning. It really doesn't help that my stomach is doing flips from the romantic conversation. It's being so awkward. I mean, <laughs> it just fits, I guess. <laughs> it's so, it's so, yeah. Yeah, no, we're not going there. <laughs> I glance at Ash, bracing for some kind of disapproval. Surprisingly, they gaze steadily at me, not shying away. The moment is slightly intense. Anyway. Um... Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really enjoyed it. Okay, I guess we could just move on. Cool. Ito. It was really nice getting to know you a, little, a bit better. Cool. I think I'll head home now, but I'll see you in the office on Monday. Sure, looking forward to it. See ya. Me too. Thanks again. See ya. Well, that was a really nice afternoon. Not only did I grow quite a bit closer with Ash, but I also started to feel... Well, what is this exactly? The cheesy romance talk is over, and yet I'm still standing here blushing like an idiot. I guess it was just the way Ash fawned over those relationships, and how they described the devotion they'd show if they were in one themselves. That's the exact kind of thing that makes me weak. Maybe the butterflies I'm feeling aren't just hypothetical. Maybe I'm into Ash romantically too. The more I think about it, the more embarrassed I get. But I also can't deny it's not true. I've been drawn to Ash since they had started to work a few days ago. Vienna and Malik are awesome, but don't get me wrong. There's just something about Ash that pulls me in. Would the two of us ever take things beyond friendship? I immediately feel stupid for even thinking it. We've only just met, really. Workplace romance never goes well. Amen. It's it's just how it is, yeah. Plus, Ash takes a while to warm to new scenarios. I can't just barge in there professing my affections when we're only just starting to become friends in the first place. Still, the way they looked at me when I accidentally suggested I'd like to be with them. Oh man, this is a tricky one. Maybe I'll just have to start dropping some subtle hints into the conversation once we're back at work. Don't do that...
Also, you're there for superior. That's the power balance there. Yep. 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 That, that's, that, that adds to it. That adds to it. Nothing aggressive, just something that Ash could see as an invitation to be more open about their feelings. If they even do have any toward me. They definitely seem much happier around me today. So if that's anything to go by, there could be a chance. But I need to stop thinking about it for now. It's so early for this and my cheeks feel like they're gonna fall off from grinning. I press my palms on, against my hot face as I stride out of the lobby. I feel like it's kind of crazy to be crushing on someone so soon. But it's pretty exciting too. Yeah, so I, I agree with you there, Jules. That's... Oh, hey. oh no, it's it's the perv. I've up uploaded my set of results to the system. Have you done yours yet? Just finishing it now. I tap away at the keyboard, entering the last piece of data. There, done. Sweet. It's almost the end of the day, and our senior team members are combining our work for the boss to analyze tomorrow morning. Huh? I'm guessing yours is already there, Lydia. You know, now I feel like um, maybe the boss will be like, hey, you know, Ash isn't performing well. Uh, you can fire her. Them. 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 You can fire them. You know, can you imagine how this conversation would go between our character and them if we have to fire them? That would be so... Oh my god. <laughs> please please let it be in the game. This 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 would be so funny. <clears throat> I'm guessing yours is already there, Lydia. His assumption is pretty reasonable. Lydia is easily the most organized out of the three of us. However, it seems like today is an exception. Oh man. I totally forgot. I don't even have time to input this all right now. I promised Barbara I'd drop these files around to her section and help her sort them. She nods at the hefty pile of folders she's carrying. Jeez. What a mess. I really spaced out on that one. I'll do it, Lydia. Don't worry. She gazes at me, hopefully. Oh? Would you? I'm still locked in. You can just use my computer. The data's there. She jerks an elbow toward a small printed document on her desk. Yeah, that's fine. Go get the files done. Awesome. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. I don't think I've seen you drop the ball in a long time, Lydia. Wait till the boss hears about. Hey. The boss ain't hearing crap. Get the door for me, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> the whole room erupts into giggles at their play fighting. And Sean obediently holds the door open for Lydia to, to exit. Her arms wrap tightly around the stack of files. Grinning, I make my way over to Lydia's desk to help her out, as promised. I've barely sit down when a small presence Gets to hover up by my side. Hey. Oh, hey, Ash. Did you need something? Can I ask? Uh, sorry. Anything for your boobs? Uh, I mean, you, Lydia. Okay. You are very, very fixated on uh, the boobas. <laughs> I mean, I cannot blame you. I was just wondering if I could watch your input Lydia's results. I haven't done that much work on the online system yet. I'd help me, it'd help me understand better if I could see how it's done. I mean, who doesn't, Jules? Only if you don't mind, though. So they really are putting in an effort to be more proactive in the office. Nice to see. Of course not. Pull up a chair. They pat her back to over to the desk. After wheeling their own seat over to the sit next to me, we get down to business. Excuse me? Okay. Just just kidding. I try to explain the process as best as, ca as I can while going through it. Thankfully, Ash seems to understand it with no problems. I let them do certain parts of it and they are able to keep up decently. It's not long before we're done and Lydia's spotless track record lives to fight another day. Thanks. Thanks for letting me help with that. I think I'll be able to do it by myself now. Sure thing. You're really hustling to get grips with everything. I can see the difference from when you first started. Really? I'm glad it comes across. It's true. This week has been noticeable improvement in how much Ash tries to get involved with things. This is... They swivel their chair from side to side bashfully. I think so. You've definitely made me feel welcome. Thanks for being so nice to me and for all of the guidance. It's helped me settle in more. They send a small but authentic bee my way, and I feel touched. 
Hey, don't even mention it. I'm glad you're on the team. I smile back, and the air around us tingles with growing friendship. Wow! Way to hoodwink the newbies! What do you mean, hoodwink? Right? Oh, come on. Everyone knows you've always been a total loner. You only ever have your face in your work, your games, or your pillow. Lydia would back me up if she was here. He smirks boyishly at me. And what's that supposed to mean? Huh? I'm just saying. Now you all, ooh, look at me. I'm so approachable and friendly with Ash. You clearly have ulterior mu motives, no? <laughs> oh, yeah. Th th this guy is something else. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so, so we we all hate Sean in this house, yeah? <laughs> he wiggles his eyebrows suggestively, and his gaze yo-yos cheekishly between me and Ash. In fact... You two seem closer with Ash than myself or Brianna. Are we not cute enough for you? Is it the green hair? The shy smiles? <laughs> he chuckles as he teases me, and I glare back, glare in mock anger at Sean. See what you've done now? You've got the newbies copying your dumb obsession with office gossip. Fine. At least I'm not using database tutorials as a cover for flirting. <laughs> <laughs> he and Malik crack up at this, and the rest of the office follows suit. S face turns an impressive shade of red, and I think mine does the same. I hope all this joking around doesn't bother Ash too much, since they are not the biggest fan of being the center of attention. Oh? Go on, Ash. What makes you want to work with him more than anyone else? What magnetic connections drawing you in? But they are assholes. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Everyone stares at Ash eagerly, and I feel bad about what is what this is turning into. Yeah, this is so annoying. What the hell? <laughs> I think that seals is Malik will be the last one we will be dating. <laughs> However, to my surprise, they actually respond. You know... I don't know, um... They turn back to look at me. As our eyes meet, I see something shift in their expression. Yeah. I just like him. I did not expect, expect such a serious and heartfelt answer. Hell yeah. There's a chorus of whoa from everyone in the room. As though Ash and I are the main characters of a drama they are watching. Oh yeah! So cute, when's the honeymoon? All right, John, keep your pants on. He takes the hint, slinking back to his desk. Thankfully, everyone else decides that they've also had enough of ripping on us for one day. Going back to what they were doing. Ash and I stand up, beat face and embarrassed. Somehow Ash doesn't actually look that horrified about what just happened. They grin shyly at me as we return to our own desks. Okay, butterflies are officially, officially fluttering again. I sit back at my computer, finishing up the tasks, the last tasks of the day. It's hard to concentrate, though. It might have been all good and good fun, but Malik had a point when he suggested that Ash prefers to work with me most. I've kind of noticed it myself, honestly. They've definitely been pushing themselves to be more outgoing with everyone, but they also seem to gravitate towards me most. I swear, every time we talk, there's more eye contact, smiles, and familiarity. It's been really nice, and I haven't noticed them being quite that open with the others. And now that they say that they just like me in front of everyone and smile so damn sweetly when they say it, my heart can't help but read into that, you know? Dude. Uh. Mm. Okay, whatever. If I'm being honest with myself, I do not. Th I do think I'm generally starting to like Ash. They're pretty much exactly the kind of person my dating fantasy are based on. It's hard for me to tell if they feel the same about me, though. I'd like to hope so, but they are so shy. Maybe I should wait for a clear signal. Something from Ash that's a definitive sign that they're thinking about me in a more than friends way. Dude, it's been like a week. Calm down. Uh, mm, calm the fuck down, dude. Uh, okay, whatever. We we need we need we need to. You know, I understand the game needs a bit pacing. You know, they need to chop chop on. Otherwise, it feels like, uh, <laughs> but no. <laughs> if it happens, then I feel more confident about making a move, and maybe I'll ask them out. 
This whole situation is something, you know. Okay, plan acquired. Work done for the day, I'm flipping through all the TV channels, looking for something to spend my evening on. Game show, not really my thing. Crime documentary, maybe. Drama? I pause for a second, watching a, a couple on screen. I mean, Mel stayed at my place for a whole weekend after just three weeks of knowing each other. I mean... <sighs> yeah, but, but you two are not in a work relationship, you know? You two aren't a superior and uh, you, you're not like a mentor and pupil, you know? That, that That's not a thing, I think, so... Also, you probably spend more time together than uh, Ash and our character does, so... Yeah, you know. Also, this is still the first week here. You know? A lady proposes to her girlfriend, who says yes. Cliché romantic music swells as they slide the ring onto her finger. I moved in with my husband after staying with him two weeks, but we knew each other for years beyond. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's... Uh, you know, this is basically the TikTok version of how a relationship should go. You know, they just uh, go all the, all, the, all the flashy and then just, you know... Make it fast, make it count, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Again, it's again, it's it's a video game, so they have to pace it at some point, I guess. So let's see how it works. <laughs> I bet Ash would enjoy watching this. Damn it! You really can't go five minutes without thinking about them, can you? Shaking my head and grinning to it myself, I try to get them out of my head. I can't be turning to mush every time I see anything remotely romantic. I start browsing the channels again. If I can find something I'm actually interested in, a noise catches my ear. I hate phone vibration sounds in video games. Can I just say that? I hate the sound the phone vibrations make. Like, I fucking hate this in movies, I hate this in TV shows, I hate it in video games. It is just spiking my anxiety every time it happens this alone the vibration of the phone is making my oh god oh, okay whatever oh, calm down <laughs> i've got a text i dropped the remote grabbing my phone instead it's ash that's unexpected yeah the the, the phone rotating is is a sound that makes my anxiety go all the way up. I don't know why. It, it's just a thing. Why does I was thinking about them too? It's like the Roman sense is pinged from across the city. God. <laughs> you know, I, I really like this game, but come on. <laughs> yeah, Dobel is another thing, yeah. Let's see what they sent. If you're not busy on the next day of work, do you maybe want to hang out again? Just the two of us. I really enjoyed our cinema trip. No pressure, though. I really didn't see that coming. Discord has a vibration? What? What do you... Huh? I'm confused. <laughs> Excuse me. I feel like Ash and I would never have hung out in the first place if I hadn't asked first. Ash seems to be introverted to initiate things like that. Yet here they are, asking me to go somewhere with them again. Just the two of us. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking uh, uh, ringtones or whatever, like the ding or whatever. I'm, I'm really talking only the vibration on the on the desk or something. This is what, what makes me go nuts. Is this the sign I'd planned to wait for a couple hours ago? The signal that Ash does see me differently than our co-workers. I'm not sure, but somehow I feel strangely optimistic about this. I kick into action and text Ash back, confirming that I'd love to get together with them again. Maybe this time. Something undeniable will happen. Oh boy. It seemed to take forever, but the days have finally run around. My second meetup with Ash. I've been looking forward to it all week, and the warm fuzzy feeling is still stooming around my chest as I ride the train to the city. 
I gaze out of the window in an attempt to occupy my excited brain. However, another distraction comes along. I don't get many phone calls. Who's this? Ash? How strange. Maybe they got to our meeting spot early or something. I go to pick up the call, but before my, think my thumb can hit the button... Oh, it ended. Like Ash hung up before I could answer. Crazy how there's only a few people at the office living in that city. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's weird. It might be my signal. I'm on a train after all. Peeking ahead to make sure we're not about to go through a tunnel or anything, I call them back. It drinks for a while, but no response. This is a bit bizarre. Uh oh. I guess all I can do is carry on to making my way into town. Hopefully everything is okay. Talking about anxiety spikes. Holy shit. After getting off my spot, my stop, I make my way through the crowds. We agreed to meet at the same place as last time, so we can watch another movie. I stand here for a fi good five minutes, but there's no, still no sign of Ash. Now I'm starting to worry a little. I could try to call them again, but I don't want to come across as clean or annoying. Hot Lucas, come on. Indie devs, calm down. <laughs> I'm just as curious as to why they called me in the first place, and then apparently changed their mind. I hope nothing bad has happened. I wait for a few more minutes, puzzling over what to do. Then, to my relief, I spot Ash at last. Come on, I just brought it up. Yeah, you had to take it. I understand. <laughs> they come barreling down the sidewalk in a hurry, and a apologetic look already plastered across their face. Hey. They halt clumsily in front of me, panting from all the running. Are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm late, and for the whole confusion with the phone calls. They have to take a moment to catch their breath, so I give them a few seconds. Nothing looks out of place, other than their flustered expression. That happened. You've been waiting for a while, haven't you? Nearly ten minutes, but honestly it's fine. I didn't wonder what the call was about. Is everything alright? It's alright. Yeah, don't worry, I just got caught up with something. Never mind that, though. Shall we go in? They gesture toward the entertainment complex behind us, but I hesitate. I don't want Ash to just brush off their problems if something's bothering them. Are you sure you're okay? You seem, seem a bit off balance. They freeze for a second with a guilty look, as though they've fi been found out. Yeah, you're right. <sighs> there was something on my mind before I came here, and it really threw me off. I don't want to ruin the day, though. We should head to the cinema. We might miss the start of something we want to see. It would be inconvenient, but I think Ash's well-being is more important than that. Hey, don't squash your feelings. If you're not up to going to the cinema right now, I understand. Do you want to talk about whatever's going on? They look up at me with both surprise and conflict in their eyes. It seems like they're fighting with themselves as to whether to include me in their issues or not. Well... Yeah. It might... Be nice, actually. The reason I called you on the way here was because I was having second thoughts, of, thoughts about meeting up today. Damn, that's not good to hear. Hey, Ryoka, good day to you. Hi, Nine. Nine, nine, nine. That's not... I realized I was just being silly, though. That's why I hung up. How is your day? Happy, happy, happy day. Happy Valentine's Day. Mate. I realized I was just being silly, though. That's why I hung up. I don't know why I wouldn't want to change their mind. I really hope it's not something I have done. Well, if you'd really rather not... Wait. No, no, seriously, I do. I really wanted to see another movie with you today. I've been looking forward to it. I just... A stupid idea got into my head, and I had real trouble trying to force it out. Their eyes sort of gaze or glaze over for a second, as though they are deep in thought. I cannot guess what this is about, but it seems kind of serious, if it made them almost cancel on me. Can you just... Do you, uh... If it's not annoying to change plans, could we maybe skip the cinema today? I kind of like to go somewhere quiet where we can talk. I feel like there are a few things I should tell you. 
Oh, here go. Here, here come the true colors. The game name. Let's go. <laughs> oh. That's fine, Ash. Don't apologize or anything. This seems important. We can catch a movie anytime. <sighs> Ash nods, humming quietly in agreement. My intrigue is growing by the second. It seems like it might be a sensitive subject, whatever it is. Is there something somewhere specific you'd like to go? Yeah. I do kind of have somewhere in mind. If you're cool with me choosing? Sure, no problem. Let's go. Okay, so my guess is an underground dogfighting ring. Illegal thing. Dogfighting. Any, any, any other guesses where we're going? An illegal fight club or something? <laughs> That's another timid nod. And there they turn to stride down the street in the opposite direction. Amused but very curious, I follow. Therapy, oh my god. Okay. Ash ends up taking me to the park. I've walked through here a few times before, but never really spent any time in it. Right. This is it. Sometimes I like to come here if I want a change of scenery or some quiet time to think. You go to a children's playground to get some quiet time. Okay. I mean, there are no other people in the city, so this works, I guess. That's cool. I'm happy to hang out here for a while. Okay. Hey, wanna sit down? Yeah, sure. I think they mean the park and the playground. Yeah, obviously, but there's a playground to the left here. Come on. <laughs> they lead before they into the park, and I automatically assume that we're heading for a bench. However, Ash walks right past them, heading instead towards the patch of trees. At the side of the children's playground. See? Children's children's playground. Told ya. Illeg illegal children fighting. Let's go. <laughs> they know can be a little child sometimes. Sometimes I'm 90% child. Hello? Nice to meet you, Lucas. I guess it would be more peaceful to sit here. Away from the main hub of the activity. We tread across the grass, and then Ash pauses in front of a tree, seeming satisfied. Huh? You're okay? Sure. I can make, make like a hippie and hug some trees for a day. Wow. Wow, what? Why, 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 why would you say that? Oh my god. Okay, whatever, let's, let's just ignore that. <laughs> they exhale a tiny laugh, and then sink down onto the ground. They curl up comfortably against the bark of the tree. Seems like they've been done plenty this time, so plenty of times before. Yeah, Cryptid is a fucking idiot. <laughs> He's a fucking moron, that's what he is. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> uh, I don't like how the text leaves the box on the right. Wait, what do you mean? To, uh, we need to play dating sims on stream too often. I mean, we have a bunch of visual novels and whatever, so... Oh, the in-game chat box, you mean, not the chat box chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, I see what you mean here. The, the, trans the opacity is a bit too low here. I see what you mean, okay. Yeah, okay, I see it now. I mean... <sighs> okay, I'm gonna think about something with that, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I noticed, Lucas, I noticed. I'm gonna think about something with the whole visual uh, dating sim stuff. Because I'm enjoying myself a lot too, so... Okay, anyhow, move on, moving on. I plop down next to them, leaning my own back against its bumpy surface. Mmm, smells like nature. You don't get that very often in the city. I just sent the ghost of an abusive husband to hell and I'm satisfied with my work. <laughs> Good job, Jules. <laughs> I like how you added the question mark at the end there, Lucas. <laughs> Neither of us say anything for a little while. Ash simply stares across the park, watching the kids run around and the birds peck at crumbs. I don't mind the silence. I'd rather Ash tell me whatever's on their mind in their own time. Soon enough, they pipe up at last. Um. So... 
Sorry again for earlier. I probably made you worry, and sorry for this weirdness. No need, Ash. We're good. <sighs> Alright. So I almost backed out of our meeting because of the whole uh, non-binary thing. Why would that affect anything? I, uh... I know I said I'm happy with the way I present myself now, and I really am. It's just that sometimes people feel weird about it. They're not comfortable being associated with someone who's not, you know, like everyone else. I got it into my head that maybe you were one of those people, and being around me in public might make you uneasy. That's the last thing I'd ever think. I know what you're saying. Some people just don't get it. But I'm the opposite. I don't have a problem with you being non-binary at all. The way you look is great. Didn't I say I liked your outfit last time we met? As I wander around with insecurity. But I... I wasn't sure if you were just being polite and hiding your true feelings. It's hard to gauge people, people's reactions. That makes sense. I'm sorry if I gave you the impression that I didn't approve or anything. It's fine. You didn't do anything wrong. It was me. I think I projected my own fears onto you and read something into it that wasn't there. I do that sometimes. They wring their hands awkwardly and a pang of sympathy hits me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I am aware, but you know, the character probably isn't. And even The thing is, even if you scratch the surface on this topic, there's so much more behind it. And people think they get it because they scratch the surface and they don't know shit. That This is the whole... Uh, it is not easy. And pretending to know what, 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 what this is all about is fucking... You know, I'm aware of things, sure, but I don't know things, you know. It's uh, it's a thing where you have to tread carefully. Smacks in-game grip in the face. <laughs> Why stop it in-game grip? <laughs> Why? Okay, okay, guys, guys. Would we stop calling me crip? Please. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't like that, 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 I don't like Crip. But so don't do that. <laughs> I, di I didn't say, I didn't, I didn't say about, uh, since it only was Lucas that was calling me that, but no. I, j I, j I just don't like it. <laughs> oh, please don't. Thanks. Yeah. Well, it's like three more letters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it must be difficult, right? I won't pretend to know exactly what you go through, but I can imagine it gets bad at sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's just super weird. Like it's it's not hard writing out cryptid. <laughs> Three more letters and add an entire syllable. Oh God, uh. little uh, whatever. It does. I've had people purposely avoid me before and refuse to be seen with me. That's bullshit. Anyone who judges you like that is an asshole. My bro crinkles in annoyance as I speak. No one should treat Ash any differently just because of who they are or what they look like. I can guarantee that you'll have no problems with me. I genuinely like the way you are and I'd never be ashamed to be associated with you. We're all good. Okay, I just get from now. No, that, that that was from my old, 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 way back when nickname. I used to go by uh, G and Watch. So uh, Jules adapted that for G N, which just uh, stuck, I guess. They meet my eyes, relaxing a little. Thanks a lot. I won't question anything like that with you again. I think I already knew you were fine with it deep down. My self-esteem just sometimes takes a blow and I worry. That's pretty understandable. That's a moment of quiet between us. Ash fills with a blade of grass between their fingers and then glances sideways at me. You know... Also, I figure that since we're having this conversation, I should tell you a few things about myself. How about cry then? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck, girl. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ryg is a free action, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I don't, I don't mind. I don't, I don't mind if you call me Crip Lucas. I just don't want, you know, that everyone calls me Crip because, you know, it's. Uh, I just, it, it feels weird. <laughs> And if people start adapting stuff like that because uh, I'm being called, they like, for example, I call Jules Jules because I know her, you know. And if I call Jules Jules on stream, and then a new random person comes in and calls Jules Jules, that's kind of weird, no? You know, that's. Uh, I mean, it doesn't count for you, Lucas, because Lucas is in your name in Twitch, but whatever. But you, you get what I mean, right? Okay. Anyhow. Also, I figure that since we have this conversation, I should tell you a few things about myself. Just so that I make a bit more sense to you, if you get what I mean. Sure, if that's what you want to do, I'm on ears. They're not gearing themselves up to talk. I feel as though this is going to be kind of intense. But if Ash thinks that sharing some of their personal stuff would improve the understanding between us, then I'm happy to hear it. If you want the truth. Okay. So I was born female. A girl, I guess. But I never really identified with it. Especially when puberty kicked in, I started really hating the fact that I had a female body. I felt stuck in it, you know. Trapped. Besides, everyone has all these expectations of you to be feminine and dress a certain way and all that stuff. There's so much pressure to conform, conform to a traditional gender norm. I honestly don't mind people addressing me by my chosen name, don't know matter how. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, Crip was not my chosen name, for example. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, um... I understand that having a female body is way more taxing than having a male body, for example. Even though, you know, they're, they're not identifying as any, any of the genders, but going from the basis of having a female or male body, um, yeah, you know, having the female body is kind of losing the coin flip if you want. <laughs> It's it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know they have so so much shit to go through more than the male uh, males have to do. So it's 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 a pain, and I can understand that. Yeah, female body has to go through a lot. Yeah, exactly. Their eyebrows sink into an irritated look. That's not. I never wanted to do any of that. I didn't want to be female or even made male really i just wanted to be nothing in particular neither here nor there just a being not a sex i think a lot of people feel that way especially in this day and age where exploring your gender identity is much more encouraged and supported knowing this background information definitely makes ash's preferences and the way they present themselves very natural now i accidentally right clicked sorry of course, my parents assumed I was going through a tomboy phase, and that I'd grow out of it. It was hard to prove them wrong, and actually have my feelings recognized. I bet it was. Parents tend to think they know everything there is to know about their kids, right? Right? Exactly. I'm lucky, though. As I got older, they eventually accepted that I was serious about my identity. They are supportive now. Well, that's very lucky then, yeah. That's awesome. I'm really pleased that they are on your side. Ash nods, seeing comforted at the thought. I just feel like... Over time, I've slowly come to be more public and committed about being non-binary. I started asking people to use different pronouns for me, and I wore the clothes I felt most comfortable in. Some people didn't get it, but most have been nice about it. My parents never comment on what I look like anymore, and I always use they-them when talking about me. A tiny smirk walks its way toward onto their face. Wow. At least they didn't have to get used to me renaming myself, right? I lacked out by getting a unisex name like Ash. 
Yeah, handy. <laughs> the chocolate and the atmosphere around us light lightens, lightens a little. Ash falls silent for a moment, gazing across the park again. I find myself, myself stealing glances at them. Now that I know their struggle, I appreciate them even more than I already did. Y you know part of their struggle. Just saying. They seem like a fragile person, but they're actually pretty strong, if this is what they've dealt with. I'm so glad that my sons grow up in a time where intolerance is a lot more uncommon than when, when I grew up. My boys grow up thinking LGBTQ themes are perfectly normal and they accept the gender identities of other without any hassle. Good. Then the world isn't all bad, right? At least there's a little, little positive things in regards to before and now. So that's good. I love to hear that. Okay. Sneakily looking at their figure, I feel a sense of revelation knowing that they were well, I feel a sense of revelation knowing that they were born female. I also can't help but notice, not in a perverted way, that they don't seem to have much of a chest. I guess they must use a binder to make it less noticeable, right? Gosh, Ash go through a lot every day. I just feel to, I just feel like who they are supposed to be. Kishan got actually a negative comment on his report card from school because he couldn't name any cliches or prejudice because he simply doesn't know them. He's not confronted with this kind of stuff at home. Yeah, nice. That's good. That's good stuff. That's that's good stuff. It's quite special that they're sharing this vulnerability with me. Ash sounds back into the moment, looking at me again. Yeah. I feel a lot more comfortable about myself now. I don't care as much what people think of me. I, uh... Just occasionally I get a bit paranoid, I guess. Sometimes people are nice to begin with, but then they get weirded out by me later on. I didn't want the same thing to happen with you. That's why I freaked out a bit earlier. So yeah, sorry mess you around like that. Oh yeah, I'm, I am I know, I know. I'm aware. I, um... I've had some, uh... Uh, when I when I was to, you know googling some stuff and sh uh, shit, I read something about that. So I have uh, some information about how you know this can be um, not helpful at all. <laughs> Seriously, you don't need to say anything. No harm done. Again, it is important to look up stuff if you don't know shit. You know, and even if you think you know stuff, you probably don't know shit. So it doesn't hurt to you know. Do research. It doesn't need to be this topic. It can be any topic, really. If you think you know shit, you probably don't know shit. I kind of want to thank you for telling me all of that just now. It can't have, can't have been easy. I totally understand everything you said, and it doesn't put me off at all. I think you're pretty amazing, honestly. You've never given up on being true to yourself, despite how difficult it can get. That's awesome, Edge, really. My cheeks burn a little with embarrassment, but I mean it. Ash stares at me, their eyes swimming with several emotions at once. Oh. You... Thanks. I'm really glad I opened up to you. You just get it. I nod with a smile and they return it. Hmm. Being non-binary can just make things complicated sometimes. Friendships and relationships especially. I'm sure it does. Relationships are complicated anyway. Even without something like that being part of it. Ash nods more vigorously, emitting an enth enthusiastic noise of agreement. You should hear some of my dating stories. They'd probably make you feel a lot better about yours. I laugh darkly, and Ash cocks their head inquisitively. Really? How so? Well, I guess I just haven't been the best with the best people. A lot of my relationships ended up with the other person leaving me. It feels like my mouth floods with a bitter taste as I speak. And one of them actually, um... A fog of memories begins to fill my mind, and what I see within isn't nice. Taking a breath, I continue, filtering out everything except what I want Ash to know. They cheated on me. 
It was a real punch to the gut when I found out. No way. As mouth falls open in shock, and their face suddenly is sympathetic. That's not cool. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly fun, but to be honest, I've had an ex go one worse than that. For real? Worse than cheating? What happened? My last ex was someone I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. We were really in it for the long term. Well, I was. I was anyway. I was serious about her, but I guess she didn't see me the same way after all. My stomach clenches as I recall it. She ended up serving me the papers and that was that. Single again, lost everything I'd been planning for with her. My eyes drop to contemplate the grass gloomily. I hear the sound of dirt and twigs rustling as air shifts in place, reacting to what I've said. I'm sorry. I didn't know that about you at all. None of our co-workers had ever mentioned that you've been married before. No, but I'm not gonna go into all the all-ins and outs of that. Ash doesn't need to see the big picture. This is enough. Well, it was seems to be a theme in my life, anyway. My parents got one when I was about 10. Maybe they were preparing me for the future. I laughed darkly, seeing no point in getting angry about it. I'd rather just deflect it with humor. That's tough on you. I look back up at them again, and the gaze we share is pretty deep. Ash then reaches across to me, completely taking me by surprise. They grab my hand, holding it between both of theirs, and squeeze it warmly. Oh. As if they have suddenly realized what they've done, they quickly jerk away, staring shyly at the ground. I... uh... Sorry, I just... They trail off, but somehow I feel my bitterness floating away as I look to them. That was so sweet just now. It's okay, I don't mind. We make eye contact again, and this time I'm the one to move first. I slide my hand towards them, pressing the back of it against theirs gently. They pause for a second and then... Our fingers interlink. Right. Uh, yeah. I guess we've both been through a lot, huh? You could say that. You know... I think that's why it's extra nice that we could talk like this today. We can kinda empathize with each other, even if we haven't shared the exact, exact same experiences. We just get each other's perspectives, right? The corners of their mouth twitch upward into a real smile, and it warms my whole being. Yeah, I really feel that too. I'm glad you're comfortable enough with me to open up like this. Nice. Yeah, I'm not as anxious as I was when we first met. I trust you. I trust you. Three little words that hold so much power. <laughs> we laugh sheepishly, still grinning and holding hands. Ash's mood seems to have lifted, and I feel pretty touched about everything that's happened today. We've definitely grown closer, and it's something I can't put enough value on. I really like Ash, and every day we spend together only intensifies it. Things are still uncertain, but I know for a fact that now that Ash is the person I want to try and make a future with. I can't deny my feelings anymore. I'm falling for them, hook, line and sinker. Today has been a little rocky, so I'd better not act on this feeling just yet. I wouldn't want to overwhelm Ash after they've brought up so many delicate feelings of their own. For now, I keep my affections aside and squeeze their hand again. You've known them for a week, you can just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our connection is strengthening, and if I'm lucky, it might just lead to what I'm wishing for. Okay. Well, we, we, we did the holding hands, which means uh, uh, we, we're gonna get Brigante. Um, <laughs> before we get Brigante, though, um, we're gonna take our break. Uh, I'll see you all in three to five minutes. Take care. I'm really enjoying this so far. I'll see you all in three to five. Here you go, Jamie. And before you ask, yes, I did refill, refill the printer paper after I did this. I hand him the document smirking in victory as he rolls his eyes. Can't scold me this time. It's such a midnight blue like it. Yeah, their hair are wonderful. Yeah. After distributing um, the rest of the documents to the whole floor, I head back to my section. I don't mind that the boss asked me to play delivery person today. It got me out of my desk chair for a bit. 
I round the corner, noticing that Brianna seems to be getting everyone's attention about something. As I get closer, I hear that she's trying to figure out a problem without a shared database. Well. The figures were fine yesterday, but now they have all uploaded now that we've all uploaded our data, it's saying that there's a discrepancy in the real results. When did up everyone upload their parts? Yo. Lydia and I did ours straight after you did, so I doubt it's ours that's causing the issue. Yeah. I remember yours being in there before it went wrong. Malik, what about you? Hmm. I did mine two days ago, so if it's only today that it's messed up, then it's not mine either. I approach the group and we start trying to relay it out together. I uploaded mine yesterday, that only leaves Ash. Ash perks up at the sound of their name, looking a little worried. Yeah. Yeah, I did mine about two hours ago, something like that. Did I program it wrong? Ah. Uh, maybe. It would make sense since you were the last to edit the database. Oh. Oh, sorry, I'll correct it right now, if you can point out where the problem is. I'll take a look if you want. I'm sure it's something really small. We'll fix it easy. Thanks. She might just need a refresher on how it's done. Vienna smiles sweetly, but Ash and I tense up, having noticed the elephant in the room at the exact same, exact same time. Vienna just called Ash the she. That's not the pronoun they prefer. I glance at Ash. As I expected, they duck their heads slightly in disappointment, and a frown forms on their face. They mask it quickly though, straightening up and acting as though it hadn't happened. Brianna continues to regard us casually, completely unaware of her mistake. Oh, okay. Yeah, a refresher would be good. Brianna nods, and I feel my chest clench a little. Seeing that Ash doesn't have the guts to stand for themselves and correct her. They're shy, so I get it, but they still just have to be addressed in the way that they're most comfortable with. They shouldn't just put up in being misgendered because they're too awkward to tell someone they're wrong. Brianna goes to sit back down at the desk, but before she can get very far, my mouth flies open almost of its own accord. Brianna. Yeah? Uh, I glance at Ash, hoping that they won't feel too self-conscious about this. Ash actually prefers to be called they, not she. Brianna's eyebrows shoot up in surprise, and her gaze wavers between the two of us. Ash is also stuck in place, looking slightly anxious. Don't worry about it. You didn't do it on purpose. Just thought I'd let you know. Hey, it's fine. No, I appreciate that. She faces Ash properly, pressing hands to her chest with an apologetic look. Sorry. I didn't realize. I should have shouldn't have just assumed. No stress. It's okay. Thanks for not being weird about it. Don't worry. Of course not. Everyone's gender identity should be respected. I won't make that mistake again. Sure. It's cool. Thanks. The three of us glance around the room, realizing that everyone else has been watching the conversation with interest. Yeah, you should have, Blondie. <laughs> oh god. Brianna is alright, okay? Uh, she, she, she's alright, but just a bit, you know, yeah. unaware, I guess. Did everyone hear that? Ash is a they. Lock that in your brains. We are supportive gang in this office, no misgendering here. He smiles warmly at Ash. The others nod and agree respectfully. Ash relaxes, seeming less awkward now that the scene hasn't blown up into something really embarrassing. I appreciate that. It's good of you to point that out to our scripted. How long have you known about it? Uh, from the first week you guys started, I think. Hmm. I guess you two must have gotten pretty close then. Dude, we just asked them. Why is everyone so weird about this? God damn it. He looks across Ash again. Hey, uh... I'm glad you were able to tell someone in the office, and now that we all know, so there'll be no more issues. Mine, if this so. Oh, God. Mm. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's kind of a relief, actually. I guess I only told Cryptid because it can be awkward with a large group of people. Exactly. Mm, he winks at me and I grin. Definitely. I felt so comfortable, I kind of forgot how much it scares me sometimes. Ash's whole energy shifts as they say this, in their smile as they gaze at me. Their honesty kind of bowls me over, especially since the whole office just heard it. Uh -huh. 
Okay, let's get it over with. You guys are so in love. Are you sure that honeymoon's not coming up? <laughs> can please, can someone please hire a hitman for Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone chuckles and I roll my eyes. Can it, Sean? Yeah. Knock it off. We'd have to get married before we could have a honeymoon anyway. And just so you know, Ash's mouth suddenly twists into the most mischievous grin I've ever seen on them. <laughs> Everyone's invited to the wedding except you. There you show up. <laughs> Our co-workers roar with the laughter. Ash is the last person in the office that anyone would expect to put Sean in his place. It's so uncharacteristic, yet brilliant at the same time. Aww. Wow, thanks guys. I guess I won't offer to be the best man after all. He takes the jab like a pro and then slinks back to his desk. Taking it as a signal that we should all get back to work, everybody puts their attention back to their screens. Ash catches my eye for a second. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the whole pronouns backup. They gaze contentedly at me and a warm feeling spreads through my chest as I see how re relaxed they are now. Anytime. Let me just finish what I was doing and then I come over and look at the database with you. Sure. You know what I like, dislike about Malik the most? The pose they chose for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I, I, I see what you mean. They sit back down and I head across to my own desk to do the same. I try to wrap up the task I have opened on my computer, but my mind keeps replaying what just happened over and over, distracting me. All that teasing was pretty powerful for the chorus. Excuse me. All that teasing was pretty powerful for the chorus, but the way Ash actually clapped back for once. And it wasn't just any old comment to get Sean to shut up. They actually played up for these fake insin insinuations and barely even got embarrassed about it. For someone as shy as Ash to suggest that we were a couple so boldly in front of everyone, even if it was even if it was only a joke. I feel like that's gotta mean something. Butterflies swarm in my stomach all over again as I think about it. Ash and I have been definitely been growing closer lately, especially since that deep conversation we'd had in the park. My inside spars with longing, and I start to wonder whether I should. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. I've been thinking about doing something for a while now, something that'll really seal the deal and bring the two of us together in a much more powerful way. I think it's about time I acted on it. After today, finally feels like the time is right. Yeah, tonight after work ends, I'll make it happen. Oh boy. Uh. Oh boy. By the time we all clock out and leave the building, my palms are starting to sweat with anticipation. I feel like a teenager again. As we all say goodbye to each other, I catch Ash's eye, subtly hinting that I want to talk to them alone. They get the message, casually putting distance between us and the rest of the gang. What is it? What's up? Not much, I was just wondering what color flowers you want for the wedding. Oh, man. Really smooth boy. Really, really smooth. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Oh my lord. Oh. <laughs> they giggle, their cheeks turning pink. Ouch. That was a mess, huh? Yeah, but you gave Sean what for? Her. He was almost speechless for a second. We chuckled at the memory. Hey, um... By the way, I did generally appreciate you correcting Brianna like you did. You didn't have to stick up for me, but then I guess I probably wouldn't have spoken up about it myself, so... Thanks. I'm glad the record's been set straight. Well, that's a relief. I thought I might have said too much at first. They shake your ha their head. And their hair flops cutely around their face. It's alright. Don't worry, you're good. Yeah, that, that, there's nothing straight here in this house. We share a smile, and then I take a breath, seizing my chance when, while it's here. Go on, don't screw it up. 
on the subject of you and I. I know we were just joking about being a couple earlier, but I was actually wondering if you might like to go out with me for real, like... Really? On a date? Their surprise is written all over their face, and it sends a little shockwave of nerves through me. Yeah, if that's something you're open to. I totally understand if you're not. I've just really been enjoying getting to know you. I'd love for us to spend more time together and see where it goes. I really like you. My cheeks throb with heat as I say it. Oh man. Why is confessing your feelings so embarrassing? I feel like I'm sweating a river. Ash simply stares at me for a few seconds. They clearly did not expect me to say any of that. The longer our eyes remain locked. The longer our eyes, 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 our oysters. Let's go. Thanks, Jules, for that one. N n now I lost it. Thanks. <clears throat> the longer our eyes remain locked, the more I feel as a, <laughs> the more I've made a mistake. Have I ruined our friendship by wanting more? They blink slowly, loosening up a little at last. For real? Yeah, I'm serious. Why do you not? Wait. No, I just... I'm not used to being asked out on dates, but if you actually mean it... Of course I do. You know, I think you're great, Ash. We've got a honeymoon coming up, remember? <laughs> Why am I doing this? <sighs> okay. I I need to I need I need to I need to sip up my tea. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> my humor breaks the awkwardness, and they splutter out a laugh. I uh. Well, in that case. Yeah, what's up, Lucas? Yeah, I actually really like that. Yes. Victory! Oh, awesome. Are you free on Saturday? They nod eagerly. I don't hate that humor. <laughs> I kind of had an idea about what we could do, but if you'd rather choose, that's okay too. My game is on pause, maybe you can ask because I can't stop laughing. Oh man, this is so... This is so... Something else. I'm, I'm really glad you're enjoying it, I guess. Ah, uh, shite. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm like. We just end up seeing another movie. I go along with whatever you pick this time. That's the exact answer I was hoping for. Alright, cool. So, shall I text you with the details later? Nice. Sounds good, I am. Um, honestly, thanks for asking me. I smile, shaking my head. Ash is a wonderful person. They should never feel as though they are not worthy being asked on dates. No, thank you for saying yes. No, thank you. No, no thank you. We share a sheepish grin and then Ash takes a step back backward. Huh? So I'll see you on Saturday? Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Definitely. Me too. See you then. Bye. They head off down the street, and I swear I see little bounce in their step as they go. <laughs> okay, that's cute. <laughs> Please just play the game. What What do you think I'm doing? I'm playing the game right now. What's wrong with you, dude? <laughs> My own heart is thundering happily. What a success. Now that I'm done, I feel like a sense of euphoria starts to rise within me. Am I just supposed to be shutting the fuck up or what? <laughs> <laughs> I know that I, I am aware, Lucas. You, you don't need to tell me. I'm, I, I'm, I am aware. They said yes. And now the stream of mine that I've been longing for, fantasizing about, can finally come true. Wallet, keys, ID card. What is this place? Is this our place? Like our... Oh my god. What? I mentally tick off everything I need to take with me, checking that I definitely pick them up. It looks like a fucking hospital. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? Then I dash to the mirror, analyzing my clothing and giving my hair another quick brush. This is probably the most exciting Saturday I've had for a long time. I get to take our... Arsh. Yeah. Let's take Arsh out of a date. Let's go. 
This is such a weird bedroom, uh, you know, in comparison with the living room we were in. Yeah, I know, right? I get to take Ash out on a date, and I've crafted it as perfectly as possible. I spent ages looking online for something special for us to do. Something that Ash will really resonate with. I feel pretty good about what I've decided. <laughs> take your art out on a date, let's go. <laughs> Listen. No, I'm, 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 not, I'm not gonna go there, it's fine. Once we're done with the main event, I have something even more memorable planned. Yeah, Mr. Streamer, take your arse out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I feel like we have to make this a thing, huh? The whole visual novel or dating sim thing once a week. I, I, I feel like that needs to be a thing, huh? Main event? Oh no, you're cosplaying the trickster for the dot. For the dot? With the dot by daylight? With the deed? I mean, there could be worse things you could do at a first date, I think. Okay. Ooh, let's move on. It is our apartment, or house, I guess. Date by Daylight should have been the name of the dating sim, not how to talk to you. Man, I'm still mad there's no DLCs out. I'm so fucking mad. This game was so fun. And they didn't add any DLCs. It was so easy money. Ah. Uh. Yeah, hooked on you is a good consolation prize, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of which, I better make sure I've got everything in order. I opened the cupboard by the windows, checking its contents. Yep, it's set up just right. Hopefully this will make the evening end with a real treat. Uh, you'd think we have could have figured out making the product by now. Yeah, no, I know, right? Eh, it's gonna be great. They definitely won't see this coming. That's tomorrow Sunday, so it's not like we have to be sensible and cut the night short to make sure we're not tired at work. We can enjoy the whole evening together. My insights fizz with anticipation as I start picturing all the amazing things that might happen. Then I force myself to snap out of it. Time to head out to meet Ash. Yeah, give me all the killers today, money greedy company. <laughs> I, I I would love to date Dredge. <laughs> that's that, that, that's gonna be a fun night out. Satisfied that I have everything I need, I take a big nervous breath and head out. Right on time, good. That'll give me a chance to. Also, okay, Lucas. So you are in, in the in the camp of uh, I love uh, you know creaming in feet. Got it. Oh damn! Ash is already there. I quicken my pace, jogging up to them sheepishly. Hey, sorry if you've been here a while. The last thing I wanted to do was leave you hanging around. I mean, R Rin was was the spirit, no? Or am I confusing things now? I'm, I was pretty sure Rin was spirit. Hmm, yeah. Well, I can't say much with my Roman's root choice in that game. I mean, we've seen everything. Yeah, Rin is spirit. Yeah, yeah in, in, in Hooked on You, you are creaming her feet with a sun cream. That, that, that was my reference. No stress. Don't worry, I purposely got here early. To make up for last time, you know. They grin and I shoot one back. We didn't need to. We chuckle, and the atmosphere between us feels slightly strange. Not in a bad way. I think it's just because this is an official date. Things just automatically feel high tension. Yeah, oh yeah, let's, let's cream in Pete. Yes. Ah, yes, Pete. The Dead by Daylight character Pete, who doesn't know them? <laughs> Eat. Füße. Can I ask? <laughs> so what's the plan? I've been wondering about this idea of yours. I can't help but smirk to myself as I picture everything I'm aiming for today. Well, I'm not giving too much away yet, but let's just say the first part is definitely your kind of thing. Okay, Lucas. C calm down. Don't calm down, sir. <laughs> 
Oh, calm down, sir. Well, I'm not giving too much away yet, but let's just say the first part is definitely your kind of thing. Really? Why is that? Is it romance related? You could say that. Nice. Nice. Is it another movie? Nope. But we have two. T we have tickets for something. You're gonna have to wait until we get there to find out, though. I shove my hand into my pocket, pulling out the tickets and waving them in the air teasingly. Ash giggles like an excited kid. <laughs> All right, I guess we'd better get going then. Yep, shall we? They nod with curiosity flashing in their eyes, and I lead the way. I mean, yeah, we did every route in Hooked on You, both bad and good ending, and Trickster. Yeah, we did everything. We did everything. We even had to mod our files to get the 100% because the community fixed the bug before Dead by the uh, Behavior did. Which is super funny. When we arrive at our destination, Ash's eyes widen with interest. We step into the lobby of a local theater. Plenty of people are milling around, chatting excitedly and buying drinks for the show. Wow. This place is kind of fancy. I've never actually been here before. Neither have I. But when I saw what was, what was on today, I had to bring you. We share a smile and I hand the tickets over to the staff member welcoming us. He scans them and passes me a smooth, shiny booklet. What is it? Just something I pre-ordered when I bought the tickets. Cool. Let's see. Not yet. This is a surprise, remember? I hug the booklet to my chest, laughing and trying to hide it from them. I want to keep the mystery going as long as possible. <laughs> they giggle, crossing their arms and pig pouting like an upset child. Come on, let's find our seats. We wind our way through the crowd, heading into the auditorium. Oh, this place is fancy. Look, don't we have a... Don't we have a thing for that? Hold on. Do we have the fancy thing here? No, we don't. That's so sad. Aww. I thought I had the, I had the Little Misfortune thing as a... As a sound file here. Never mind. After finding our seats and getting comfortable, Ash nudges me softly. Huh? So you are fi are you finally gonna tell me what we are here to see, or do I have to wait until it starts? Alright, here you go. Grinning, I surrender the booklet in my hands. Ash takes it hungrily, their eyes sweeping across its cover. It's the program for today's show. It has lots of information about the production, as well as some glossy high quality pictures of Barry's on stage and behind the scenes moments. When Ash reads the title, their lips part in surprise. Oh, okay. This is that really popular play that I keep seeing advertised everywhere. It's meant to be a really touching love story. Yep. I thought it'd be your, the sort of thing you'd enjoy. You know... I've been actually thinking of coming to enjoy see, coming to see it. I just hadn't got around to looking at dates yet. I've never, never really go to the theater. But it's something I've been curious about for a while. Oh well, lucky choice on my part, I guess. Now you get to see what it's like. Thanks a lot. It was really thoughtful of you to treat me like this. They beam at me. As I'm smiling back, they raise an arm, snaking it toward me. Oh. I think this is the first time we actually hugged. It's slightly awkward due to the fact that we're having a swivel in our seats. And do a kind of sideways hug, but it's still really nice. Ash doesn't seem big on physical contact, so I take this as a good sign. They will throw after a few seconds, keeping it short but sweet. This is great. Seriously, thanks. I'm even more excited for the show now. No worries. I hope it lives up to your expectations. Yeah. I'm sure it will, here. They offer the program back to me, but I shake my head. That's okay. I bought it for you to keep as a souvenir. Take it home. They pause, seeming a little taken aback. You're awesome. You're so generous. I shake my head again, my cheeks buzzing with heat. We still have a few minutes until the show begins, so Ash spreads the program out between us. We flick through it together, admiring the photos and little snippets of trivia. I'm very aware of how close we're leaning into the together. Technically, it's not that different from the times we've poured over the same piece of paperwork in the office. The 
Giving this as a date though, it feels 10 times more electric to be this close. Soon enough, the lights dim, announcing the start of the, sh of the show. Ash puts the program away, sitting up straight and peering at the stage eagerly. As promised, the play delivers on the romantic theme right from the beginning. I'm impressed to see that there's an actual live orchestra providing the soundtrack. I know nothing about music, but some of the players seem very skilled. The pianist looks super absorbed in his work. His dark hair masks his face as he leans over the keys. There's also a very expressive female flute player who creates lovely melodies with her well-trained breath. Achievement unlocked seems familiar, but that's kinda improbable. Recorded music being played over the speakers would have been fine, but this is a nice touch. We watch the love story unfold, every now and then I steal a glance at Ash. Their face glows with joy as they drink it all in. I think I hit the jackpot with this play. They seem to be get, getting really into it. Glad that I've gotten the date off to a promising start. I relax and enjoy the show. The first half had gone surprisingly fast. I guess we'd been pretty absorbed in the action. When the interval began, Ash had immediately begun to chatter happily about how great it's been so far. I am pleased that they're having a good time. I've just got back from buying us a tub of ice cream from the refreshment stall. They're pretty expensive for a little cup, so we've decided to share one. We take turns scooping ourselves a bite with tiny plastic spoons. It's sort of intimate in a way and it makes us both blush as we eat. Wow. I can't wait for the second half. I feel like I might get addicted to watching plays now. I mean, that's fine, as long as I can tag along too. They giggle and I join in. Definitely. Of course, you're the one who got me started after all. I do seriously appreciate you doing this for me today. I never expected anyone to fool my silly obsession with romance, but you are actually supporting it. Why wouldn't I? The way you're so passionate about it is one of the things I really like about you. I feel a little sheepish over saying something so cheesy, but it's true. For real? Really? You don't find my taste as annoying or lame? I'm used to people kind of disregarding my interests or, to be honest, a lot of things about me. They trail off, suddenly looking pensive. It makes me sad to know that Ash struggles with her self-confidence, thanks to people brushing them off for various reasons, all of which are stupid. Absolutely not. I don't find anything about you annoying Ash. Oh, this... I messed the sentence up, but whatever. The way you look, the clothes you wear, and how you present yourself. How committed to your identity you are. How considerate and sweet you are, and the way you talk about relationships. Things you're passionate about. They all make sense, make you really awesome in my eyes. My face practically sizzles with heat, but I meant every word. Ash is a wonderful person, and they deserve to know that. They gasp quietly, seeming very touched, but there's still a hint of disbelief here. Yeah. Honestly, anyone would be lucky to have you as their partner. Okay, calm down, calm down, dude. Take, uh, kick the brakes a bit. I should probably take a leaf out of your book, actually, and compare some more romance into my life. My previous relationships clearly failed due to my inability to sweep people off their feet. I chuckle at myself and Ash appreciates the humor. No way. I don't know, bringing someone to a theater to see a play in their favorite genre is quite romantic, isn't it? I guess so. We both go quiet for a moment, smiling bashfully. It's a start at least. What else should I do to hype up the romance? Ash giggles and the pinkness in their cheeks deepens. Well... This is kinda romantic too. They nod at the pot of ice cream we're holding between us. It's almost empty, but there are a few bites left. How oh, true. It should probably be all cliche and do this, right? Trying not to laugh, I scoop up a heap of ice cream and hold it out to Ash, suggesting that I want to feed it to them. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> An airy giggle escapes them and then they open their mouth expectantly. Wow, we are actually going full rom com with this. I lower the spoon into the mouth, they savor the taste while peeking at me 
half embarrassed and half pleased. This is sappy as hell, but somehow I don't care. <laughs> now you. Ash returns the favor, but as I open my mouth, <laughs> splodge. <laughs> Let's go. We splodged, guys. The day's over. With a mischievous grin, they purposely blob the ice cream onto my cheek and said. I sit there rolling my eyes like a fool while they sneaker at me. Thanks, really adds to the atmosphere. <laughs> Ash burrows their face in their hands as they laugh. Although I've got ice cream on my face, I can't help but admire how carefree they've become. They're almost like a different person when they're fully relaxed. Well, not different. Just more ash than I see elsewhere. They actually have a cheeky side, and I love it. You know, you're gonna have to find some way to wipe this off me. I didn't pick up any napkins, and this is entirely your fault. I raise my eyebrows at them, and they breathe a shy giggle. Huh? How am I meant to do that? I don't know. Use your imagination. I'll be honest, I'm kind of flirting here. I hadn't entirely meant to, but... We are so familiar with each other now that I can't resist. Plus, this is an actual date, right? The smile on Ash's face shrinks to a, to a lick that seems almost spellbound, as though they are thinking really hard. Their eyes flip between the ice cream, slowly melting on my cheek and my mouth. Their own lips part slightly as they stare, entranced. Are they actually considering... My heart starts hammering double time, and for a second I feel like Ash leans ever so slightly closer to me. And then the room is plunged into near darkness. The second half of the play is starting. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. We are both startled out of a moment, and Ash sits back on the chair suddenly looking embarrassed. Oh man, we almost kissed just now. Realizing how much of an idiot I must look like with ice cream still smeared on my face, I carelessly rub it off with my sleeve. I guess we'll have to continue that later, if Ash really does want to. It seriously seemed like they were about to go for it. I kinda can't believe it, in a way, this is Ash we're talking about. They seemed too timid to initiate a kiss, and yet... Something was about to happen, I'm sure of it. There were practically sparks flying between us. Well, the play's starting again now, so I'd have to squash that thought until it's over. It's gonna be hard to concentrate, but I'll do my best. I watch the actors begin the next scene, but then I get that prickly feeling you get when you can tell that someone is looking at you. Glancing to my side, I see that Ash is indeed gazing at me. You okay? They don't respond, looking almost distressed for a second. I feel like it's kinda wrong of me, but I can't help but notice how attractive they look right now. They eye, their eyes are locked onto mine with such intensity, like deep pools of ocean, inviting me to dive in. For a few seconds we re remain almost frozen in time. Then they shake their head with a heavy breath and launch themselves toward me. Hey, we got a smooch. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Tastes like ice cream. Mm. Okay, never mind. Okay, you know what? I'm, I kind of ruined that. Sorry. My senses are blissfully assaulted by many things at once. The tickle of Ash's hair against my face. The rush of hot breath on my skin. The pressure of their lips against mine. It's actually happened. I'm a bit stunned that they just sprung it to me like that. But the happy tingles running through my body makes it all worth it. I also don't really care that we're in the middle of a crowded theater right now. I've been hoping that Ash and I might get to this point, and it's so satisfying to know that we made it. They really do like me back. Can I just say how I hate they do like me back as a sentence? They do like me back? The, the, I just hate everything about that sentence. Anyhow. Before I know it, Ash withdraws from me almost as quickly as they pounced. I'm sorry. They whisper to me under ragged breath, their cheeks crimson. I, uh... Kinda couldn't help it. A quiet laugh escapes me, seeing them so worked up. 
I guess the tension between us was too much to ignore. They're actually quite bold when they're feeling strongly about something. Ash is full of surprises. Don't apologize, I'm happy you did. Their eyes meet mine again, and then they relax. They beam el elatedly, and I do the same. We find each other's hands in the near darkness, linking them fondly. Not wanting to make any more of a scene, we put our attention back to the play. I'm so euphoric that I feel lies through the entire Feuerwerk display. Feuerwerk? Yes. Feuerwerk. Hans Flammenwerfer, jetzt. <clears throat> An entire Feuerwerk display is exploding in my chest. I am so lucky. The day has gone even better than I imagined. Now a whole new avenue has opened up. An opportunity for Ash and I to become the couple I've been hoping we could be. Trying unsuccessfully to suppress my ecstatic grin, I glow with joy. This is gonna be a day to remember. Okay. Um, okay, so here's the deal. We are gonna take a break, and then we're gonna go for another hour. But this break will take a wee bit longer. This break will around about be 10 minutes-ish. So uh, I'm gonna put on some clips for you guys to watch. And we will continue on. We're gonna go with another hour of this video game because I'm enjoying myself enough. And I feel like you guys enjoyed too, so we're gonna go for one more hour. I'll see you all in three to five. Take care. Alrighty, we are back. If I'm a bit uh, out of breath, that's because I went outside real quick and do stuff. Uh, so give me one hot second, and then we're gonna continue on. And again, don't worry about it, uh, Jules. Um, you play Elden Ring, have fun with uh, with me. Say hi from me. Uh, this will be on YouTube like in a few days, so uh, you can watch the last hour there. That's that's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, that's the YouTube's. Why was there no data returned? Wait, why why does it give me? No, this is wrong. Hold on, I, I oh god. Uh, no, not not the YouTube's. I put in the wrong link on the on the bots thing. Oops. I'm a pro. I promise. Let, let me fix that really quick. <clears throat> Schnauze. Uh. Da, da, da. Streaming tools. No. Where is a chatbot? Chat commands, custom commands, VODs. Why did I put the Twitch thing here? Am I fucking stupid? Okay. Okay. So this is my YouTube channel for the VODs. Uh, yeah, you can all see all the stuff from the Twitch things. And yeah, the link uh, you, uh, Lucas posted was for the recording only YouTube thing. That's gonna happen with uh, Slay the Princess and um, Elden Ring eventually, but yeah. Okay, fixed it, saved it. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Jules. I love both of you. Thank you. Let's move on. Yeah, same to you. Same to you. We'd enjoyed the rest of the play, practically vibrating with happiness. By the time we exit out into the, the theater's lobby again, our hands are sweaty from having stayed clasped the whole time. This is great. That was really good. Thanks again for organizing this. It was definitely worth seeing. Don't mention it. It's awesome to see you wrapped up in something you like. I've had a great time with you tonight. Yeah. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. Everything was... They blush as their eyes momentarily fall to my mouth again. You're awesome. So nice. How can such a tiny gesture make my temperature zoom like that? I think it's because I'm used to Ash not flirting or expressing their thoughts physically. It is hard in here. Well... I walk you to the train station, if you want to head home. Oh. 
Oh yeah, I guess so. They look a little disappointed, and I'm secretly psyched. I don't want to say goodbye just yet either. My plans for tonight are almost complete, but not quite. Unless you fancy coming back to mine for a bit. You totally don't have to. I just thought we could maybe have a drink and host to a great night. You can keep the Roman's theme going too. I bust out the scented candles and dreamy music. Dude is going all in today. Holy shit. <laughs> they giggle. Their cheeks dimpling as they smile. Nice. That actually sounds lovely. As long as you don't mind. Of course not. I'd love to spend some more time with you. Okay. Alright then, lead the way. Sure. I offer my hand, and to my delight, they take it once more. Yes, it's been a perfect day. Let's end it with a perfect night. I need to check something. Uh, I think we are good. Okay. After a short train ride, we make it back to my apartment. The sun has completely set by now, so I draw the curtains. The lounge is more private and cozy that way. Ash loiters awkwardly in the doorway, seeming a bit embarrassed. Hey, don't be shy, make yourself at home. Wanna sit down? I've got a bottle of wine for that drink. Thankfully, they loosen up, nodding quietly. While they, while they get comfy, I pop into the kitchen and grab the wine, along with a couple of glasses. I hope they like what I've chosen. Here we go. I pour us, a bo um, I pour us both a glass. And then, as promised, I actually light some candles for extra ambience. Ash laughs, or laughs as I wink at them, darting across the room to flick the main lights off. There. Have I set the scene well? Definitely. You're scoring big romance points here. We chuckle, clinking our glasses together and taking a drink. It's so nice to have Ash here, where we can continue this blossoming relationship without interruptions. It's exactly what, was, what I was aiming for. I feel like this is the right moment to lay my cards on the table. So, about tonight. I want to be honest with you, Ash. I've loved getting to know you, and this date has opened my eyes even more than to how, my, how amazing you are. Uh-oh. Here it comes. I feel my face redden. I'd really like to see where our relationship can go, if you feel the same. Dude, this is the first date. J just keep that in mind. This is the first date they have. You are a brilliant person, Ash. I want you in my life as more than just a co-worker or friend. That spellbound look overwhelms Ash again. Um. I do feel the same. I'm not good at speaking my mind sometimes, but I haven't felt disconnected with anyone for quite a while. I really like you. Now we're both blushing. You really shocked me with that kiss in the theater. I saw this with a grin. I say this with a grin. And Ash's tension melts. Right? I shocked myself with it, but yeah. I just felt like I had to. I didn't want to deny my feelings anymore. Well, there's no need to keep denying them if you don't want to. Especially not now we're here. I wave a hand at the warm flickering candlelight around us. Ash gazes me almost in awe. And then something flashes in their eyes. Yeah, you're right. They set their glass down on the table, drawing closer to me. When our laps... Laps. Ugh. Whatever. When our lips touch this time, it is not quite as shy. I let Ash take the lead, making sure that they're comfortable. I want them to feel entirely safe with me. The kiss is surprisingly deep. Now that we are alone, Ash seems to have lost some of her, their inhibitions. Their fingers work their way into my hair, and I hold them gently, but firmly around the waist. This is blissful. Hey Buzz, good day to you. Yes, lip touch. Lip touch. That's the second time we lip touch. Happy day to you. I hope you're doing fine, mate. Eventually, we part. Smiling and giggling. You're making me blush. I love being with you. 
They beam happily at me, but then delve into their pockets to check the time on their phone. Uh... It's getting late though. I think there's only one train left that they'll get me home. I kind of wish I didn't have to leave. The words are like a symphony to my ears. You don't, Ash. You can do anything you like. We can do whatever we want. Wheelman kissed the homies goodnight, yeah. <laughs> if you say so. Uh. The expression turns thoughtful, and I speak more seriously. I know it can be hard to feel confident, and not to crumble under expectations or to worry about what other people would think. But I don't think... Uh, I don't want you to feel obliged to just go along with what you think you should do. Buzzers. Okay, I, that's a new one. You've been strong and bold about your gender identity, regardless of backlash, right? You deserve to be like that in every aspect of your life. If you want us to be a couple, then we will. I'd be honored to have you as my partner, and it's irrelevant what anyone in the office would think. If we're happy, then that's all that matters. Ash exhales a tiny breath, optimism beginning to creep onto th into their face. The night is yours for the taking, Ash. So if you don't want to leave... I slide my hand across the couch, grasping their fingers softly. Then don't. A sense of revelation seems to come over Ash. They simply stare at me for a few seconds, and then a smile begins to form. Oh. You... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Then I'll stay, if that's okay. Okay. It's a hell, hell of a lot more than that. You bet. Let's end tonight our way. <laughs> they breathe an accelerated laugh, and a delicious feeling of victory courses through my veins. Uh huh. It's it's victory. What is flushing through your veins? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is it. There's only one thing left that I wanted to do tonight to really seal the deal between us, and completely complete my big plan. I was wondering what card video games you guys tried. Mm, I haven't played any card games uh, for a long while. Because, you know, I, I, I stopped playing them like a few months ago. Like all of them. I'm not playing anything at all. So I'm sorry that I cannot help you there. Are you, are you fed up with Hearthstone or why the question? Everything has fallen into place, and now I can make it a real reality. Here, let me help you to be sure about your decision. I stand up from the couch, and Ash watches me with interest as I cross the room. I've been thinking about this moment for way too long. Now that it's finally here, I'm also almost shaking with anticipation. Lorcana and Never Rift. I never heard any of those. What the hell? Interesting. I closed the door, which I'd left ajar after returning from the kitchen earlier. It's a Disney card game. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna look that up after stream, I think. Pulling my keys from my pocket, I select the one I need. It turns into the lock with a satisfying click. What is that ES thing? Uh, the, the Elder Scrolls? Or no. Does Elder Scrolls have a card game? Yes, yes, yes. Uh. Uh. Man, you're playing a lot of card games, Lucas. And then Overwatch and stuff? <laughs> you have way too much time on your hands, sir. <laughs> Pulling my keys from my pocket, I select the one I need. Turns the lock with a satisfying click. Perfect. I swivel back to face Ash. They've also got to their feet, gazing at me with curiosity and confusion. What's going on? What are you doing? Okay, this is where everything turns dark and we are gonna, um, I don't know, uh, abduct Ash and, uh, I don't know, put, put them in chains in our torture basement. Yes? So, sounds good? <laughs> Mm. Oh, those are the ones you tried, not the ones you play right now. Do I look like you play a Hudson? Listen, you stream that, uh, you know, not that often anymore. I don't even know how you look like these days, okay? 
Anyhow. What are you doing? You said you didn't want to leave, so I'm supporting that choice. I'm here for you, Ash. I slide my keys back into my pocket with a hungry grin. You don't need to go anywhere. Oh my god, this is... Uh -oh. Is it? Is it? Uh, no. Ash's eye flick down my pockets as the keys disappear. Their brow creasing. But I... I don't get it. Why do you need to lock the door? Uh oh. Uh... I, I should have stopped the playthrough like uh, last before the last break, I think. Uh oh. Um. Hmm. Oh, Ash. If only you knew what I've been building up to. Oh my god. Why is this so ominous? Mm. Went got much worse. Okay. Huh. There's a very good reason for that. Let me help you understand. They shift with a little discomfort, but wait for my explanation regardless. Taking a slow deep breath, I allow my innermost feelings to spill out of me. From the moment I met you, I felt really drawn to you. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I realized pretty quickly that I was falling for you. You're just the kind of person I've always wanted to be with. You're passionate, kind, sweet and gentle. The way you talk about relationships and cherishing the one you love is just... I can't describe how deeply it touches me. You are wonderful, Ash, and I want to create a future with you. My previous relationships have hurt me a lot, but with you I think... I could make all of it disappear. Oh, I don't like where this is going. That's why I'm so glad you came home with me tonight. You've helped me to make something happen. Something I've been fantasizing about for a long time, from before we even met. Oh no. Oh no. Huh? I don't... Huh? They seem both flattered at my romantic words and puzzled about my real meaning. Oh god. Um, I think we might have... We should have just stopped playing. Oh. Well, if you really want to know... I think my parents' divorce was the catalyst. We never exactly had a loving household. But after they split, it got way worse. I shouldn't have named the character after my streamer name, I think. That was maybe a mistake. I thought, oh no. What the fuck are you up to? Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, dude. It felt like neither of them really wanted me. They kept passing me back and forth between them, and I bounced from house to house, never feeling at home anywhere. Makes you feel so worthless when you're constantly pushed onto someone else, only to have them throw you right back a week or two later. I swallow bitterly, resenting them from being thoughtless toward their only child. Since my parents clearly did not love me, I knew that I'd have to find love elsewhere. I knew that I could just find a romantic partner who would treat me like right. I'd be okay. Maybe I was too eager, but I tried so hard, snatching at any opportunity for love that I couldn't find. I've been in quite a few relationships, and with each one, I prayed that I'd found the one that gives me what I needed. Of course, that didn't exactly happen the way I wanted it to. I feel my anger begin to rise up in me with it, within me darkly. Ash stands like a statue in the dim light, completely transfixed on me. People are so fickle, Ash. And they are liars. They say love you, when in actual fact they have totally different agendas. I've always given my all in relationships and every one of them betrayed me. Oh no. <clears throat> I don't ever want to have excuses again. My ex has said so much bullshit. You're so overbearing. You never let me do what I want. You're manipulative. No matter how much I... They add my soul onto them, that's all I get in response. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Of course I had to start setting rules, monitoring their friends, taking away their phones. I hate to keep them tethered to me, otherwise they just leave, oh my god. Hmm, I shouldn't have named myself after this character, I think. Other, you know, you know what I mean, oh fucking hell. I start to feel panicky as I remember it all. And yet, they still found a way to ditch me. I followed them secretly, I boxed them in socially, I bent their lives to my will for their own good, 
for our future. But they threw it back in my face. Oh, fuck. We are having an issue here. <laughs> oh no. I feel like I'm speaking on fast forward, but the hurt pouring out of me. The more I say, the more nervous Ash becomes. I mean, I feel so bad for them now. The kicker was the girl who cheated. It doesn't get much more disrespectful than that, does it? She told me weeks before she wanted nothing to do with me anymore, but of course I didn't listen. Just empty words. She can't have meant it. And then I'm walking through town and I see her, holding hands with, her, with some jackass. Thought she'd have the best of both worlds, did she? I couldn't believe it. Okay, so... Keep in mind, this game had a trigger warning on different stuff, so... Uh, I think this is... Uh, pretty obvious that shit's gonna go down soon. Uh-oh. I curl my fists angrily, but before I can carry on, Ash suddenly pipes up. Their voice is high and childlike with anxiety, but it still cuts through the hush of the room. Wait... You took your ex's phone away and made rules for them? And that girl, she left you but you attacked her because she's found someone else? Their eyes widen with a hint of fear. That's not... That's not right. Of course it was. She was mine. <gasps> I spit the words more harshly than I meant to and Ash flinches. I'm past caring now though. My body is pulsing with rage. <sighs> I don't think you... Hang on, if that's how you're gonna react to a breakup, then what did you do to the last girl that divorced you? Ah yes, that old deception. You really made your own assumptions on that one, didn't you? She never divorced me, stupid. We were never married in the first place. What? She served you the papers. You told me that we were, when we were in the party. My amusement wills at this reminder. Yes. Very complicated papers. I had to get uh, go to all sorts of legal bullshit meetings. And I'm not even allowed to go near her. Move house and everything. Um... Yeah... My resentment festers like a wound. Ash stiffens, taking a tiny step backwards. Well, you know, I was assuming true colors would show the true colors of, you know, your dating options and not the main character. So... Oh boy. Hold on. So it's... What? A restraining order? The words come out in barely more than a whisper. That's the legal term for it. I could think of plenty more fitting ways to describe it. A fiery breath hops out of me. It was not stalking. The world is a free place. You cannot get in trouble for keeping an eye on your own possessions. God. Why? Um. Oh, shite. This is not how I thought it would move on here. The hatred seethes within me. I glance at Ash, and they see that they are more, almost tearful. What's wrong, Ash? Surprised by my determination? I chuckle as they shuffle worriedly. This is crazy. This is also... Their tongue ties itself in knots as they try to answer. I'm serious. You know you never had to do any of that stuff, right? Those exes, they left because you clung onto them too hard. Like with me, right now. Even Doki Doki is less crazy. <laughs> Their eyes flick toward the locked door for a split second. This is... You didn't need to lock me in. I wanted to stay. Wanted. That's exactly it, Patch. Past tense. You people always try to change your mind, don't you? Sure, you might all be loving and loyal one minute, but the next... Oh, no. You want to leave me behind. I learned long ago that trust does not work, and that betrayal is inevitable. My voice clumps in volume as I puff my chest out in super superiority. But I'm not gonna happen. let it happen this time. That's why I've been crafting this plan for months, years even. 
the perfect plot to make sure nobody ever defies me again. And thanks to your willingness, it has finally come true. I lick my lips as though I'm about to devour a delicious meal. Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> Nothing's gonna get in between the two of us. I've trapped you here, and now you'll all have no choice but to submit to me. I barely even had anything to do anything either. They agreed to come home with me like a shot. Literally walked into my trap. You'll never be able to betray me like everyone else did. I'm going to keep you locked in here forever. When no one can interrupt our relationship or take you away from me. I will preserve you like the treasure that you are. <laughs> I know, right, Jules? <laughs> I'll take care of you every day. Whenever I get home from work, you'll be right there, just where I left you. I'll make you real comfortable. Ash bristles with alarm, taking another step away from me. It makes me laugh. I don't know where they think they are going to escape to. <sighs> You're scaring me. Their voice comes out in a whine, and they seem on the brink of tears. It only fuels my sense of power, though. I could get addicted to this rush. This isn't who I thought you were. I wanted you to be someone I could really be myself around. We don't always get what we want, do we? I certainly haven't yet, but now I will. We really should have stopped playing at the top of the hour. Fucking hell. You are all mine now, my little slice of heaven. Stop it. No. I advance slowly, the anticipation almost overwhelming me. We'll be able to enjoy this perfect relationship in peace. No interruptions, no betrayal. Just you and me. Forever. It feels as though the world stops spinning. Ash and I stare each other down, a face a perfect picture of her horror. I... You can't. You can't do this. Wailing like a terrified child, they finally crack, cowering in fear. I thought you'd say that. I roll my eyes, but my grin stays in place. I've already come up, came up with a perfect solution. Luckily, I prepared a little something to help you warm up with the idea. I turn my back on Ash, my confidence firmly in place. They can't get out, no matter how long I take my eyes off from them. Opening up the cupboard I checked earlier today, I find its content laid out just right. I swipe the first item, a face mask, from the top shelf and put it on securely. Then I grasp the bottle from the next shelf down, lifting it up carefully. When I twist the lid open, my nose is met with a faintly sweet smell, even through the mask. Seems like I did this right. Memories from last night resurface in my mind as I grab a towel, with my free hand pouring some of the liquid onto it. I'd find out how to make this yourself online, and you don't even need that many unusual ingredients. Nail polish remover, bleach, all things you can buy inconspicuously. It had been a bit of an experiment, and the mixture had fizzled quite a bit. In the end though, my synth as a mad scientist had paid off. I put the bottle back down and turned to face Ash, with a now wet cloth firmly in my hand. Immediately, their eyes land upon it. Huh? What's that? For some reason, I start to giggle in response. I feel so powerful in this moment that I'm almost drunk on it. What do you think it is? It smells lovely, doesn't it? Would you like a closer sniff? I take a slow, purposeful strides across the room toward them. As the scent hits the nose, their whole body begins to shake. Hold on. Is that chloroform? There's no need to panic, my sweet. You know how I feel about you. Hurting you isn't something I want to do. But if you're not ready to submit quietly, like a good little thing, then I'll have to give you something to calm you down, won't I? The room fills with the abrasive sound of Ash's horrified breath as it grabs and sucks repeatedly. They shrink as far away from me as physically possible, whimpering and gargling at me with terror. Just can't come here. I croon the words in a whisper, reaching gently for Ash's arm. Everything is going to be alright. 
The towel in my hand drips a single drop of homemade chloroform onto the wooden floor between us. A tiny plop is no louder than a pin dropping, but as though it had been as sharp as a gun shop, it snaps Ash out of their frozen state. There we go. Oh no. Ach achievement unlocked. It smells sweet, but it ain't roses. Okay, I feel like I have to lower the music a little bit. It seems kinda loud here. Okay. Summoning some courage from somewhere, they recall backward and try to dart around me. Furious, I lunge at them, managing to catch them by the wrist. How dare they reject me like this? I won't have it! Just accept your fate, Ash! I brandish the soaked cloth threateningly. It's over, just do as I say! Huge tears begin to cast Kai down Ash's face, and their shoulders shake as they sob. Please, just... Don't! The poor thing looks like a frightened animal. But it's not going to sway me from my decision. This needs to happen. Tightening my grip on the arm, I pull them toward me while trying to force the cloth on their face. If I can get it over their nose and mouth, I sh it shouldn't take long for the drug to kick in. Stop it. Ash writhes and scrams with all their might, starting at the cloth with a feverish sense of fear and doing everything they can not to get close to it. Damn, they're surprisingly strong for a short person. It's taking almost all I, all I have to, all I have just to keep them in place, and I can't get the chloroform onto them like this. I'm gonna need to change the situation somehow. Okay, guys, we have a decision to make here, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I feel terrible. I feel terrible about ourselves. Um. <laughs> Why the main character be psycho? Uh, try to pin the arms, I guess. I bet if Ash couldn't use their arms, it could be a lot harder to resist me. So I, I chose the arms so they could still kick me in the nuts to defend themselves, so let's hope this happens. Lining myself up as accurately as possible, I squeeze the cloth firmly in my right hand. Better not drop while I do this. I take a second to psych up my energy and then strike. To my relief, it works. I managed to wrap up my arms entirely around Ash in some sort of monstrous bear hug. They twist until they're facing away from me, but other than that, they can hardly move. Brilliant. Shifting my right arm, I try to keep it pinned to Ash's body at the elbow, while I move to the cloth toward their face. It's a really awkward angle, but if I just bump my wrist like this... Almost? Ash's scream filled the room like a howling wolf. God, I really need to shut them up, otherwise my neighbors are gonna come knocking. I'll have to tell them I was watching a really loud horror movie or something. Just a little more. There. The cloth makes contact with Ash's face at last, pressing against their mouth and nose. I'm not sure how many breaths of this stuff it'll take for them to get drowsy, but I think I can hold them. Their cries become muffled under the cloth turning to disgressed grunts, grunts as they try to wrench themselves out of my grasp. I lock my arms even tighter. Not gonna happen. Annoyingly, they then change tactics. Instead of trying to use their upper body against me, they start trying to kick me. When will you learn? It's hopeless. Their legs flail madly against mine and one of their feet cracks me painfully in the shin. Ouch. I don't stumble, but it's enough to make my balance wobble for just a second. Ash takes this as an opportunity to steal the upper hand, almost leaping into the air. They swing their legs in every direction, pulling me around and almost making me lose my grip on the cloth. Stop it, you little shit! Their feet fly upward again. I hang on with all I've got, as though I'm trying to hold down a fucking horse. The sight of their shoes swashing around as they struggle makes me livid. This should be over by now. Ash, stop! Their legs swing back down, and before I know it... Shit. We got too close to the table in our fight of co for control. Ash accidentally caught the edge of it with her, with her heels, and flipped the entire thing over. 
I don't particularly care that there's no wine stains all over my rock. What's bothering me is the foul acid smells rising up into your ear. The candles. They've been catapulted uh, into the curtains, which are now starting to smolder with flames. Hot wax is spattered across the floor and smoke begins to fill the room. Momentarily stunned by shock and fear, I let go of Ash, dropping the chloroform towel to the ground. Ash doesn't even try to run anymore, anymore staring in horror at the steadily growing fire. Oh no! Oh god. The rising sense of danger knocks me to my senses, and I automatically start stomping on the flames to try to put them out. It's too late for that, though. They're already too powerful. We need water. Hurtling across the room, I rip my keys back out of my pocket and unlock the door. I think the washing bar bowl has, that I have in the sink is the biggest container I have to carry water with. I'll have to use that. I go to run into the kitchen, but something stops me in my tracks. Wait. Even in these dangerous circumstances, my DCIS rear their, their head again, wanting to maintain control. If I leave the door open, Ash might... No, I cannot let them escape. Wheeling back around, I shut the door, locking it behind me. It's alright, I'll only be in a minute, and once the fire is out, we'll carry on as we were. The second I turn the key in the lock, a frantic hammering comes from the other side. Don't! Don't lock me in here, let me out! I can't, just hang in there. This went places. What the fuck is happening? Skittering back into action, I dash away. Seizing the bowl, I turn the tap one to a full blast. Naturally, it seems to take an age for the bowl to fill. I dance from foot to foot impatiently, willing the water to flow faster. It really doesn't help that all I can hear in the background is Ash's distance, screeching, as they plead for their freedom. Come on, come on. Alright, that Lou. I turn the tap off, hoisting the ball out of the thing, the sink, and heaving it across the room. As I lumber my way back toward the launch, something seems off. It hits me that the sink of smoke is way worse than it had been before, and the fire alarm are now beeping wildly. Worse than that, though, Ash's scream have stopped. Did they just get tired, or...? I stagger to the doorway urgently, but the sight I'm greeted with makes my stomach feel like it's fallen clean out of my body. Oh shit. Achievement unlocked a flame. Ah. I was clearly too slow in fetching water. Black smoke billows out from under the door, and an angry flame lick at it, charring wood. The lounge must be completely ablaze by now. Oh god, Ash. Against my better judgement, I slam the bowl down to the floor and touch the metallic surface on the door handle. Youch. As I'd expected, it's way too hard to handle. I cannot open the door. Oh, they're still okay. Help. Help me, please. Their voice drones lethargically, like a tape that's been gradually slowed down. Shit, I have to hear them suffer like this. I hate to hear them suffer like this. I need to get them out, but I have no idea what to do. Even if I manage to unlock the door, I don't think either of us could get it open. I almost yell at them to try climbing outside, but then I realize that it's no use. Not only are the, the windows pretty small, but we're also too high up in this building, and probably fall to their death. How ironic. Trapping them was the one thing I was desperate to achieve, and now it's the complete opposite. Sheer panic envelops me as I agonize, unable to do nothing other than watch in horror. The flames belching out from under the door grow higher, consuming the wood like, ravenous, like a ravenous beast. No. As anguished cries are tortured to my ears, and I squeeze my eyes shut. I never meant for this to happen. We were supposed to be together forever. I want to save them so badly, but with every second that passes, it becomes more and more obvious that I cannot. If I don't get out of this place, I'm gonna go down with it too. A pain unlike anything I've felt before pieces my chest. I gaze at the burning door, willing my love to pass through it and reach Earth. Ash, I'm so sorry. Swallowing immense guilt, I abandon all thoughts of trying to douse the fire. Hating myself with every step, I turn my back to it and dash out of the front door. When I emerge out of the fresh evening air, it makes me realize just how claustrophobic it had been in my apartment. My lungs finally give in to the disgusting fumes I've been breathing in, and I cough violently. The entire block's fire alarms have started blaring now. 
The other residents are racing downstairs together at our designated fire safety spot. Enduring another wave of guilt of what I'm leaving behind, I follow. It's a fucking right, Jules. I know you cannot hear me, but fucking hell. It's a fucking mess. <laughs> when I get down onto ground level, I dare must have to look up at the building. What I see makes me feel sick. My entire apartment is engulfed in flames, lighting up the night like a beacon. There's not a chance in hell everything is gonna survive anything is gonna survive that. I'm homeless, but more importantly, Ash is in there. They're fucking dying in that building right now, and it's all my fault. Alright, it wasn't me that knocked the candles over, but if I hadn't scared them so badly or locked them in, my breath causes my whole body to twitch as I hyperventilate. The night was meant to be the best night of my life, and instead I've lost everything. Sirens pierce in the air, and I look in the other direction to see a fire truck roaring down the streets toward us. I'm glad they're here to stop the spread, but it's too late to reverse what's already been done. As I watch the firemen leap out, a cold chill of dread fills me. It's not just the fire department that will get involved in this. I'm pretty sure the police will come to check on what's happened, and if they do, I shiver with a fear. As the truth hits me. They want to know how the fire started, and I just know that I, even if I play it off as innocently as possible, they find a way to pin it on me. Man, this is fucking intense. Holy shit. I, I was... Oof. Okay. It's my apartment that they find a dead body in, and yet evacuated safe and... Yet I evacuated safe and sound. I might as well have a target on my forehead. Obeying my self-preservation instinct, I stumble backward, glancing up at the burning building one last time. Ash. Wrenching my eyes away, I flee stealthily into, into the night. Achievement unlocked. All I deserve. It all caught up with me in the end. After I'd fled that night, I tried to just go back to my regular life, as though nothing has happened. Naturally, I'd have to make an alternative. I'd have to make alternate living arrangements. All I'd walked away with was my keys, phone, wallet, and the clothes on my back. I checked into a cheap hostel in the city for a few days. I didn't tell a soul that anything had happened. I mostly just hid out, biding my time and trying to figure out what to, what to do next. In the meantime, I bought new clothes and went to work as normal as the following Monday to keep up appearances. I played dumb when Ash didn't show up at the office, but I couldn't maintain my innocence for long. The police showed up pretty quickly and demanded to question me specifically. My exact fears came to pass. They'd investigated the fire at my apartment, found Ash's charred remains, and learned, learned that I was the tenant. At first, I tried to angle my story to make uh, me as blameless as possible. I admitted that I'd been on date with Ash and that we'd gone back to my apartment. However, I made out that the candles got knocked over from us accidentally bumping into, into the table and we walked past it. Then I told them that I'd run to the kitchen to get water, but when I got back the door was had swung shut of its own accord and that got fused to the doorframe by the fire. That's the reason I couldn't get Ash out. I claimed that I only fled because I was so scared of being pa painted as the murderer, despite it all being an accident. I really put on my best display of a traumatized innocence, but they didn't buy it. They held me in custody while they applied for a search warrant to go back to the ruins of my apartment and do a more thorough investigation. That's when my fate was truly sealed. Amid the wreckage, they'd been able to identify that the door had been specifically locked and not just stuck. They'd also found the evidence of a cloth that had traces of a liquid resembling chloroform on it. And in my bathroom, there were more traces, found on various surfaces and containers. It totally suggested, rightly, that I'd created it myself, and that this was a planned attack, fire or no fire. I was gutted. I truly hoped that I'd be able to get off this lightly, but I guess this outcome had been inevitable. I had no chance to alter the crime scene or get rid of any of that evidence. I just had to run and hope for the best. With all that hanging above over me, I really couldn't argue my way out of it anymore. I had no choice but to tell them the truth, everything. The hostage plan, the deception, all of it. 
the only thing that I insisted on, no matter how much they doubted me, was that their death was not premeditated. I never meant to kill Ash that night. Yes, I made very metic meticulous plans to subdue them, trap them and keep them, but never kill. The fact that they are dead still causes me to tremble, nerves and guilt rising in my stomach. They were so amazing, they were going to be mine. A loud voice calls across the courtroom, pulling my wandering mind back to, into the moment. That's right. This is my final trial. I'm about to find out whether they truly believe me and how they will punish me. We have considered the evidence presented for us, as well as the testimonies of the defendant, their co-workers and the victim's friends and family. We have reached our final verdict. We believe that the defendant did, in fact, not commit the murder of the victim intentionally. However, the defendant's actions and intentions regarding the other charges, charges may have made their guilt abundantly clear. We therefore find the defendant guilty in all other counts. A year per sentence the defendant to a minimum of one year in prison on the charge of involuntary manslaughter. One year? What? Uh, what? Come on! Put some years on, on that boy! What the fuck? This is combined with additional minimum sentence of a further seven years in prison on the charge of Class A felonious assault. There's a third sentence of a further seven and a half year in prison on the charge of kidnapping. Okay, that's a few. 15 years, that's fine. The sentence may be extended if the law sees fit. I mean, 15 years is still... You know... If you ask me... Okay, whatever. Whatever. The room breaks into chatter as everybody disperses. But I stay silent and unmoving, like a rock in the middle of a stormy ocean. The judge's words have cut through me like a knife, and yet I feel oddly numb at the same time. They believe me in the end, but somehow it doesn't make this feel any better. I'm going to jail, and I don't know what going, what's going to happen to me when I get there. Will the other inmates attack me? Will the guards torture me for what I've done? Will my mind be able to withstand that confinement for so long? Will I ever live a real life again? An officer arrives at my side, grasping me by the arm and coaxing me upward. He's come to take me to my doom. Tears crawl down my cheeks as I'm led away, and all I can think about is how badly I've messed up. Ash, I'm so sorry. Fucking hell, that went freaking dark. It was fucking wholesome until now. What the hell? That makes me sad. That was a bad end. Looks like a burning passion got out of hand. Yeah. It, it, yeah, of course it was a bad end. Like, you cannot tell me this is a good end. What the fuck? <laughs> Achievements unlocked ashes to ashes. Okay. Let's load it back in here and pin the legs this time. I guess if the legs are out of the equation, their movement would be pretty limited. How do I do this? Do I try to wrap one of my legs around theirs or... No, I think I'm gonna have to make a bold move here. I grip the towel securely in my right hand, making sure that I've got a good hold on it. After a moment of psyching myself up, I pounce. Letting go of Ash's arm, I lunge downward. They don't see it coming at all, and I end up essentially hugging their legs in an awkward tackle. Sorry, I had to take a sip. The impact instantly causes them to wobble backward. Since they can move their legs steady themselves, all they can do is fall. The pair of us crash to the floor with a painful thumb, narrowly missing the table. Ash trying to scramble to their feet, but of course they can't. I'm still binding their legs like a snake twisted tightly around them. Sensing that this is my moment to really get things under control, I kneel up, leering down at Ash as they lay sprawled on their back. With lightning fast movements, I release the legs, throwing my whole body against theirs from above. It works perfectly. Achievement unlock Poison Touch. Ash can't react fast enough to me, evade me, so they end up pinned to the floor beneath me. Using my entire weight to hold them still, I free up my right arm, slopping the crown from cloth fully over their face at last. Protest all you like, Ash. You can't shake me off now. A sense of superiority floods me as I stare down at them, whining and twisting underneath me. I feel so much more confident about the hold I have on them now. I don't think they can overpower me. How long does it take to chloroform to affect someone? I hope I don't have to keep this all damn night. Ash whips their head this way and that, 
but it's easy enough to keep the towel pressed over the nose and mouth. I only start to worry when their arm comes free from my left hand. They swipe at my face, probably in an attempt to punch me. It doesn't hurt, and I manage to pin their arm back down again. The problem is that they're not my mask. It's not covering my face properly anymore. Is it too dangerous for me to be this close on the towel without protection? I didn't look into the fine details of how chloroform works. I just know that it knocks people out of their breathing in for too long. God, it stings. The smell stings my nostrils sharply. Ash must be hating this. Now I'm torn. Do I try to cover myself up again? How would I even do that without risking Ash getting out from under me? I cannot afford to let that happen. But I also cannot afford to get drowsy from inhaling the stuff myself. Shit, this isn't good. What to do? Okay, we're gonna save again. We are gonna adjust the mask and give them a way to get out. I don't dare leave myself unguarded against these toxic fumes. What use would it be if both of us, both of us end up unconscious? I have no idea how I'm gonna do this, but I'll have to try. I change my stance so that I'm holding Ashton with my elbow instead of my hand. The rest of my body is still as it was, so it should be okay. Leaning awkwardly, I crane my neck downward trying to grasp the edge of the mask with my fingers. It's pretty hard considering I cannot lift my arm and Ash is still wriggling. Okay, almost got it. I started to lift the mask back into place, but as I do, I feel something moving against my thigh. A new kind of movement that, that, that's not just Ash fighting back. Glancing down, I'm instantly filled with rage. In my moment of distraction, Ash has managed to reach down and slide their hand into the pocket of my jeans. Their fingers are wound around my keys, having stealthily pulled them out. Give them back. Furious, I snatch them. The two of us then become entangled in the tents back and forth, and Ash constantly dodges my attempts to grab the keys. Unfortunately, I get to focus on this humorless game and momentarily forget about keeping Ash pent. They strike my weakness without hesitation, lifting up their knees and jabbing them into my gut. They're done with it enough force that I shot upward. Once I was off balance, they turned the tables, grabbing me and shoving me over. Now I'm the one underneath. My back winces in pain as I hit the hard wooden floor. Ash wastes no time. As soon as I'm incapacitated, they get to their feet hurriedly. Terror floods their expression and their race to the door starts searching for the key they'd seen me use to lock it. Don't you fucking dare! I fling the towel aside and spring up from the ground, dashing toward them, but I'm too late. Ash gets the door unlocked, they rip it open, skitter down the hallway, wailing in fear as they go. No, I can't let them get away. I bear into a hall, spotting Ash at the end of it. They've already made it to the front door. They're frantically sitting through the keys, trying to figure out which one will open it. I harness my anger like rocket fuel and run like hell toward them, closing the gap much faster this time. Ash whips around to stare in horror at me. The hands fumble with the keys, but it's useless. They don't know which one they need. Out of sheer desperation, they ran to the door handle, but of course, it is locked. I reach out as I approach, almost snarling like a wild animal as I close in. Ash screams, dropping the keys with a clatter. Then, just before I can grab them, they slipped out of my grasp again. Darting like a terrified rabbit, they dash in the only direction they can go now. It's upstairs. Their little legs work overtime as they take the steps one by one. It makes me smirk how cute and utterly pathetic. Demonstrating my taller physique, I give chase, leaping up the stairs. Ash reaches the top, but I catch up so quickly that they don't have a chance to get any further. They screech as I take a hold of their arms, pulling hard and trying to wrestle them through the ground. You know I can't, you can't win this fight. I thought of everything to prevent you from leaving here. Our future is set in stone. Just accept it. More tears flood down Ash's cheeks in response. You can't. I don't want this. I don't want to be your slave. Slave? What a delicious word. I might have to call them that from now on. If I can just find a way to get them back into the launch. Oh. Just as I'm revealing my sense of power, the dreadful coincidence happens. As the two of us tussle, Ash accidentally steps on the cuff of my jeans. When I go to move, 
I'm thrown off balance on my foot and for being caught here. My body jerks erratically for a moment. All I think about is grabbing onto something to stop myself from tripping over. There's nothing at the top of the stairway but ash though, and they're busy recalling for me in fear. Flailing madly, I reach out for any sort of solid surface. If nothing comes to my rescue, I glance back up at Ash. Time itself seems to stop. We lock eyes, each of us looking just as horrified as the other. We both know what's going to happen, and yet, yet neither of us can prevent it. <sighs> the hand starts to reach out toward me, but it's too late. A feeling of weightlessness and rushing air surrounds my body. As Ash's face begins to get smaller in my field of vision, we share one final damning look of finality. I pushed too far, and in the end, it was me that lost everything. With that serving as my last thought, and Ash's screams of anguish ringing in my ears, I fall, toppling down the stairs to my doom. Okay. I mean, I can live with his, uh, with his ending, I know. Yeah, in the end, it didn't even matter, Lucas. What a spectacular fall from grace. Another bad ending. Wonderful. Love that. Okay. Achievement unlock Karma's a bitch. Okay, so we're gonna load this one again in a second. But, uh... No, I'm not gonna continue, Lucas. Um, we're gonna make the other option to you in just one second, so give me a minute. Are we ready to hopefully get the good ending now, or no? What do you guys think? <laughs> Let's go. Back to the good uh, rock music. We gotta leave the mask now. I think that's what we still need. Damn it! I don't dare lose my grip on Ash now. Not after all this struggle. I'm gonna have to pray that the chloroform isn't strong enough to get both of us. Ignoring the deceptively sweet smell as best as I can, I sit press rigidly against the ash. They are still writhing, our bodies rubbing together. If this weren't such a desperate situation, I'd be kinda turned on right now. Come on, stop fighting. I'm not sure how many minutes pass, but after some time I get my wish. Ash's movements become weaker and their eyelids begin to drop slight, droop slightly. Finally, the chloroform is working. They're trying to speak, but it's hard to tell what they're saying through the towel. More tears cascade down the cheeks, and their eyes search mine pleadingly. I'm getting dizzy. Despite my hunger to have control, I can't help but feel a wave of guilt wash over me. They're really suffering here. I'm lucky that the chloroform hasn't affected my sense as much. I do, I do have a slight headache. I can only imagine what Ash is feeling, having been breathing the stuff indirectly for so long. They groan, blinking lethargically, and I feel my conscious twinge. This is enough, right? They can't fight me when they're like this. The situation has turned out how I wanted it to. They're trapped without the ability to escape. There's no need for me to take it any further. Heeding the last shred of humidity left in me, I pulled the towel from Ash's face. Oh my god, I hate this. Achievement unlocked, flicker of guilt. Immediately, they start gulping out, desperate breaths of fresh air crying with relief. You know, if this is going to lead to a happy ending, uh, to the good ending, I mean, uh, I'm still not happy about it. We didn't have man many choices with Ash, so... I'm really curious to see if there's actually a good, good ending where we're not a psycho. <laughs> I kind of hope so because I really, re I really like the, I really like um, the whole Ash situation. I think not not the situation she's in right now, but like uh, before all the shit happened, the the energy between those two was uh, really weird, and uh, I was all in for that. Up until you know, it turned out we are a stalker. I guess. I fling the damp cloth across the room so that neither of us can reach it. Probably best if we leave it out here, out of the equation now. I go straight back to making sure Ash can't get out from underneath me, but it seems like I don't need to be so forceful anymore. A little color has come back to their face, but they are apparently too drained to move. They simply stare up at me, 
with distress, twisting their expression as they catch their breath. I'm happy that my plan succeeded, but I hate seeing them look so hopeless. See, if you just obeyed me, I wouldn't have to have to do that. Ash's lips part, but instead of words, only more sorrowful cries come out. I try to not look at the rivers of tears streaming down their face. It's too much. Well, I got what I wanted. I'm exhausted, and I do feel kind of bad about the lengths I had to go to, but here we are. I'm not sure what to do next. Maybe I should tie Ash to a piece of furniture to minimize any future escape attempts. I muse over my options, but then I'm distracted by a tiny, timid sound. Ash has finally found the energy to speak again. Oh man, I hate this so much. You don't get it. You just un don't understand, do you? Understand what? There was never any need to try to force me to be loyal to you. I already was. You just didn't give me any time to prove it. I feel my mind crinkle in annoyance. I told you earlier, I can't just trust your word like that. All my exes expressed loyalty at first, and look what happened. If I don't make meter meters, yes. It's mix of meters. If I don't take matters to my own hand, I'll do the exact same thing. It's you that doesn't understand, understand Ash. I huff with irritation, but Ash doesn't accept my answer. No. You're wrong. You're so incredibly wrong. The sudden sharpness of their voice causes me to gaze in surprise at them. They might still be suffering to my grip, but there's a fire in their eyes that wasn't there before. Listen. You only know certain things about me. You've only heard a scrap of what I've been through. Do you really think I don't know what it feels like to love someone, only to have them completely betray me and throw me away like I was nothing? The question hangs heavily in the air, and something unpleasant rattles through my stomach. How can Ash suddenly relate to my past experience so accurately? Have we really faced the same kind of hurt? What? Ash sniffs, seeming to brace themselves. Remember when we talked about how my gender identity can make relationships complicated? Of course. It had triggered me to tell them my slightly deceptive tale about my exes. If you want the truth. When I said that, I was referring to one relationship in particular. A guy I dated during university. I'm getting the feeling that this might be a long and emotionally heavy story. It seems kinda inappropriate that I'm still hovering over Ash. But I can't really bring myself to move. I think my paranoia would be more comfortable if we just stayed like this for now. Putting my full attention to Ash, I listen as they spill their thoughts. Right. I wasn't really that outwardly expressive of my non-binary identity when we first started dating. I dressed kinda boyishly for someone who was born female and my hair was already short but I wasn't fully out about it. I told him in private that I considered that I considered myself non-binary. At first he took it fine. He said that how I felt about myself could never bother him, and that the way I looked was attractive no matter what. He made me feel really safe and valued, like I was with someone I could really trust. I thought he genuinely understood me. I'm guessing that wasn't actually the case then. Over time though, he changed. The longer we dated, the more visibly uncomfortable he got. As I started to gain confidence and be more open about my identity with people, he began to pull away from me. He wouldn't hold my hand as much in public, wouldn't be physically intimate with me. Their brow creases with sadness as they recall it. It was like his love was slowly draining away, and then came the subtle up comments. Things like, yeah, those jeans are cool, have you considered wearing a dress though? Or, aren't you curious about what you look like with makeup? I think you you'd be even prettier. Oh my god. He'd never actually admit that he was hating the way my style was evolving, but I knew that it, that's what he was thinking. It really, really hurt me. He'd keep me coming back to him with nice words or thoughtful gifts, but romantically he was constantly digging at my whole person, like he was resentful of it. I don't think he found me attractive at all toward the end. Another fat tear rolls down the cheek, and my heart aches for them. I think I totally repulsed him. 
God, it must have been tor a torture to having to endure that every day. Being involved with someone you cherish and having that person undermine your entire idea for yourself. It must have felt horrible. Ash nods slowly. Yeah. It made me feel so inferior and disgusting. I almost felt guilty for trying to be true to myself, like it was wrong. I shouldn't have stayed with him for as long as I did, but I guess I was tethered by my own feelings. He'd accepted me so nicely in the beginning, and it made me put him in something of a pedestal. Part of me kept hanging on to that, despite the way we, he made me feel. I can understand how that happened. I think everyone's capable of deceiving themselves into sticking with the toxic situation, if your feelings are strong enough to blind you to the truth. I've probably done it myself at some point. That happened. Eventually it all fell apart. I was walking to class one day and saw him in the corridor flirting with some girl. One of those real preppy Barbie types. Despite our uncomfortable physical circumstances, they glanced at me with a look of disdain. I nod, knowing exactly why they'd scoff at something like that. Mm. I confronted him about it that night, and he broke down and admitted he'd been cheating on me with her for a couple of months. Oh shit. Uh... He didn't apologize though. He acted like it was no wonder he'd done it, considering what I was. Oh my god. Oh. Fuck this guy. They grit their teeth angrily. Ouch. He said he couldn't handle being with someone like me anymore. And that he was relieved that I'd caught him. It meant that he had some a solid reason to break up with me. Oh my fucking god. I hate this. He left you. Yeah. He and Barbie must have had a great laugh, bitching about me between talks, all the lovey dovey selfies they keep posting everywhere. That's rough. Being swapped out for a real girl. Quote unquote. As if being non-binary was a shameful thing, which is up, which it absolutely isn't. I'm sorry that happened to you. They hum a low, annoyed sound. Mm. Not as sorry as I was. I sunk into a real, really deep depression after we split up. I couldn't focus on my studies at all. I, it almost ruined everything. Their anger seems to give way to sorrow again, and they heave a melancholy sigh. <sighs> I got so torn up over it that my grades really suffered. I actually ended up taking a year out, and moving back home with my parents so that I could get my head into a better place. I felt like a total failure. They must have really hit rock bottom. You know. I did go back and finish my degree in the end, but it took me a long time to come to terms with what that guy put me through. After telling me this, they fall silent once more. Their eyes lose focus as they stare over my shoulder. It must have been tiring to share so much personal stuff, so I let them just be for a while. As the quiet washes over us, I get lost to my own thoughts too. I had no idea that Ash has been through that kind of betrayal. It's similar to the ones from my own past that I hold on to so fervently. I feel truly awful for them. It uh, deserved so much better than that. When I say their gender identity looks doesn't, don't make me uncomfortable, I genuinely mean it. I wouldn't want them to be anything else. The guy must have just caused so much emotional damage by treating them like that. Probably contributed massively to how shy and uncertain they are. Not only that, but something else has just occurred to me after hearing all of that. Something that I don't want to admit. I set up this whole thing, this trap, as a way of ensuring that I'd have a partner who would never leave me. Or deny my deny me or deny, deny me of what I needed. And yet the events that have made me like this, they are not even as bad as making as I make them out to be. I've been going around telling everyone that I've been cheated on, but as Ash pointed out, that's not entirely true, is it? I always saw that moment as a betrayal on my ex's part, but I guess my perception of events got warped. She'd already left me before I saw her with that guy. She didn't cheat. I just couldn't accept that she'd moved on. Ash has actually been cheated on. If I feel so hurt by the mere delusion of it happening to me, then how bad must Ash have felt this whole time? Forgetting where I am for a second, I shake my head in disbelief. The toxic side of my brain doesn't want to accept any of this, but the reasonable side is starting to realize that I've been seeing things all wrong. As if reading my mind, Ash pipes up again at last in breaking the silence. Yeah. That's my tragic little story. Do you get it now? 
Over the years, I've become more at peace with what happened, and I've learned to slowly build my confidence again. It's not been easy, but I'm making some progress at least. I'll never forget that feeling of hurt and betrayal, though. That's something that never fully leaves you, I don't think. They exhale a long, slow breath. That happened. That's why I understand how you feel. I'm not saying that it's right, but I can see how you become so... The eyes sweep over me anxiously. Um. Oh, like this. I get why you'd be so desperate for love and attention, and why you scamper to enforce control over any affection you get, no matter the cost. It sounds awful when they put it that way. I know what it's like to feel smaller than anything. Our eyes meet again, and their expressions shift slightly. Hard to describe, but it's pretty intense. That's not... But you can't keep doing this. The way you're reacting to your hurt is really bad. Don't keep rubbing it in. I just feel like... I used my pain as motivation to make even more determined to be a loyal and loving person. I wanted to find someone I could actually trust and dedicate my time in creating a truly respectful partnership with. That's what you want too, right? I nod eagerly. Yeah, it's like I said. Right. We want the same things, but our methods are completely opposite. I want to create that trust through honesty and positive communication. That's the only way it ever becomes real. You can't create trust through manipulation or force. It just doesn't work that way. I've never heard Ash sound so stern. Their voice is quiet, but there's so much firmness and maturity in it. I feel as though I'm being, I'm being scolded. I, uh... When I started getting to know you, I really thought that you could be the person I make that general relationship with. I thought you were trustworthy and honest. Tears will go up in the eyes again, and my conscience breaks horribly. But I... But now that I have the truth about you and your past, I don't know what to think. I'm not sure if I could trust you with anything. They frown with a vague sense of disgust. This is crazy. It makes me wonder if anything you ever said to me was even real. Or if you were just manipulating my feelings to get me into a vulnerable position. A sob rises up in their throat with a whimper, but they swallow it back down stubbornly. I hate this. I don't want to acknowledge that anything that Asha said about me is true, but somehow I feel as though it is. Also, I can't stand that I've hurt Ash so badly. Now that I see this whole situation from their perspective, I realize how terrible my actions have been, though. Tonight. I should have never done this, should I? Um... You know what? They look at me again, and I almost cover in response, being what might come next. No. I think maybe, no, it wasn't a lie. The guys gaze unblinkingly into my face, raising a hand timidly. They cut my cheek softly as though checking to make sure I'm still real. I just feel like... I feel like the person I thought you were is who you are, underneath everything. I think the manipulative is the lie. They, they do? Mm. You've built this ego out of desperation, like a defense mechanism, but it's not you. If you find a way to let go of it, then maybe that good side of you could shine tr through again. Is that even possible? This is... It's a real shame. The chin wobbles as they hold back more tears. If it didn't have this abusive side of you, then I'd... They cut themselves off, squeezing their eyes shut and fighting back to the urge to cry. Just want... I... Crumbling under the pressure, at least, I break down. I lower my head so that Ash can see, gasping through gritted teeth as I cry like a child. This feels so horrible. I can't even begin to describe it. There's no denying it anymore. I've screwed everything up. My own perception of the world, my entire sense of morality, and my relationship with Ash. This is all on me. I don't know who I am anymore, or what I'm supposed to do next. What I do know is that I can't undo the trauma I've already inflicted here tonight, and it kills me. I genuinely cher cherished Ash all this time, and now I've pushed them away for good. I feel Ash's chest jerk underneath me, and I realize that they're crying again after all. Maybe my own sorrow set them off. For a minute or two, we do nothing but sob. Thanks to Ash's tears combined with mine, their t-shirt is soaked. After a while, our upset dies down somewhat. I feel Ash shift beneath me again, and I will raise my head to look at them. Um. I'm really to start. I'm really starting to hurt here. I guess I'm having my weight constantly on top of them for so long is getting pretty painful. It's almost funny 
I fought so hard to get them into this position, but after everything we just talked about, I feel different. I cannot lie. A sense of defeat threatens to poison my mind as I think about giving up my victory. But what little conscience I still have ignores it. We cannot stay like this anymore. Stiffly, I push myself to my knees, freeing out from my grasp at least. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't realize how badly being in the same pose for that long has affected my limbs. My joints are screaming with pain and I'm sure Ash, uh, I'm sure Ash isn't feeling much better. Sheepishly, we struggle to our feet. Um. This is very awkward. How do we move forward after something like this? I, uh... I don't really know where to go from here. I just don't want any more drama. You can at least give me that, can't you? You gaze at me with bleeding eyes, and I nod feverishly. Yeah, I won't. My words dry out of dry up out of shame. Ash's shoulders sag over so, ever so slightly in relief. I'm sorry. I do really feel for you and what you've been through, but I just can't process my feelings right now. Tonight has uh... been. Oops, I skipped something. I'm sorry about that. I need some time away from you. My stomach clenches in sadness. Yeah. To think things through. I feel as though the second they step foot outside of this apartment, they will never want to see me again, and I cannot stand it. Oh, right, there's a go back button. Right, yeah. good point. Uh, oh, cool. I'm sorry. Good, good point, Lucas, thank you. But I just can't process my feelings right now. Tonight has been so intense. Understatement of the year. Uh, I need some time away from you. My stomach clenches in sadness. Yeah. To think things through. I feel as though the second they step foot outside of the apartment, they'll never want to see me again. And I cannot stand it. However, if I want to take even the tiniest step toward redeeming myself, I should respect their wishes. Sure. Oh. And we should, um... They glance at the forgotten chloroform cloth warily. Mm. You probably shouldn't tell anyone about any of this, right? Are you, I mean, I thought you'd, you know, call the police or... I'd half expected it. No. No, that'd be so... I'd rather we just keep it a secret. I'm not sure if I even deserve such mercy. But I guess they want to avoid stretching this whole situation any longer than we need to. You know, you fucking died in another timeline. Ash. Just wanted to let you know you burned and... Actually, you probably suffocated. So, keep that in mind. Uh, Alright. Ash nods, suddenly unable to look at me. Then, with tiny scared steps, they skirt around me, heading toward the door. I feel like there's a knife in my chest as I listen to their footsteps patter across the wooden floor. Then I hear a jostling sound and turn around. Oh, of course, the door is still locked. Wordlessly, I join them at the doorway, scooping the keys back up from inside my pocket. Once the door is open, the pairs of us awkwardly step outside. We tread silently alongside each other, coming to a halt at the front door. I switch to a different key, unlocking the last barrier, keeping Ash within my grasp. As the door swings open, I feel a crushing sense of failure, followed by a bitter flash of hatred at my own sick desires. Just let them go. Ash immediately steps into the doorway. He gazes up to the cool night sky with wonder, as though they thought they'd never see it again. It makes the guilt claw at my heart even harder. I freeze for a second, as though they are about to say something to me. I wait expectantly, but no words come. I stand there frozen in time, the evening breeze swirling around us. Like Ash, I feel like I want to say a million things right now. But of course, I cannot bring a single one of them on my tongue. Ash takes a deep breath, half turning toward me. Then they seem to change their mind, swiveling back to face the street. They hesitate for just a second longer and then they are gone. Once they were out of sight, I close the door, standing like a stone in the hallway. I'm a monster. Okay. Excuse me, part, part two, what? I thought that was the end of the end of the end. Okay. Um, no. 
we don't have the time for that. So we're gonna operate this thing. Um, I was really thinking this was gonna end here. <laughs> 